Hello everyone, welcome to Tehe TV. This week we're going to be discussing Record of Ragnarok Season 1, Saw, as well as a little bit of a special discussion. I am going to be discussing my thoughts on the first time viewing of Scarface, Pulp Fiction, as well as giving my initial thoughts on the Gran Turismo movie that came out recently. Along with me today is my my two friends, Damien and Stone. Say hello, guys. How do you do? Konnichiwa, bitches. Stone boo. Okay. Uh, so we, uh, I guess we're going to go uh, right into uh, Record of Ragnarok. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh. <laughs> Nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> I wish I took that down earlier so I could see the look of disgust on your face. Just, uh, Charles, just bring it. Just bring it. Yeah, yeah. In other words, Record of Ragnarok sucked. It doesn't matter what you know. That's, that's, that's not, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I thought I saw yes, like sir. a red spot on my. Oh no, it's just a shadow. Okay, never mind. No. We don't have time for no Rudy Poo candy ass opinions about this show. No, that's fine. It's it's, it's yeah, absolutely no, no, fine. No, no, it's look, look. Just just to give my initial reasons as to why I didn't like this show. This show focuses way too much. On exposition dumps. Seriously. Like, look, like some of the fights, look, even though this first season only focuses on three goddamn fights. Three. Come on. But the, but the, I thought for sure it was going to be a fight, like a fight in episode. Or fight in two. I initially give, give thought that as well. I did. I thought that as well. I thought it was going to do a fight in episode. And then. But, th but think about it. It's, it's, it's 24 minutes. Think about the matchup. Name one matchup. Name, name one matchup. Oh, name it's, one. Name one matchup. Uh, because at, okay, Adam versus Adam and, Zeus. Yes, Adam oh, and Zeus. Zeus. Think about that. Adam and Zeus. Adam versus Zeus. The, 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 the god of all gods versus the first Versus the first human man, as far as the Bible goes, created in God. Yeah, and image. apparently Adam was able to hold his own against Zeus, which I thought was like, really, really. It was, it was, it was God. It was, it was God mirroring. You know what I'm saying? It was, he he was made divine in God's image. reflection is what it was yeah. called. Yeah, it, he was. You know what I'm saying? He was made in God's image, so that was the whole thing. But I mean, it, you have to think about these are epic, fucking fights epic fucking legendary yeah which were constantly interrupted by exposition dumps come on <laughs> what do you mean okay please for, for those for, for those people who may not completely know what that is please explain to them what that what, what that is to you and why that annoys you so okay so we 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 have the characters the the human character and the god character get it ready for the fight go like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna start a fight it's like ooh it's gonna get exciting it's like it's like ah ah they're gonna get ready for the fight ah and then side to a sidebar long long time ago this happened to this character this happened to this character fucking interruption and we start learning about shit that I don't give a flying fuck about. So you don't so so you mean to me it, it amazed you like it amazed me that that Lou Boo was like a real so well. well you know, say it's, it's a fabled actual human warrior that that, that people that people recorded. No, no, no. I get that, I get that, but it's just they didn't do a good job of explaining that backstory because they did it in the middle of the freaking fight. <laughs> okay. I mean, you... do it before the fight, do it after the fight, fine, but don't do it in the middle of the fight. I hear you. I just feel like, I guess from my creative standpoint, I got where they were going with the situation because you're dealing with, you're dealing with epic, you're dealing with epic, like gods that, you know, and then also dealing with like 
like human warriors that 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 I had never that I had no idea about. I had no idea about a couple of these guys. Seriously, the, yeah, I'd you know, never so, heard yeah. of the first and third guy. The sumo wrestler, I hadn't. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting a little ahead, but I'm just saying it was it was just like a lot of actual documented, you know, what I'm saying wars that people that, that people were documenting their history or what or, or stories that were passed down about this particular person on down. It was just amazing to hear, and I guess in a way it was kind of exciting because it just kind of brought more context to it. It wasn't just it wasn't just okay. This is this is their depiction of what a god is and the situation, and they're just kind of going into it and they're fighting. It was more of a of a heaviness to it like it was supposed to fucking be because i mean it's a god fighting like a human you know what I'm saying? A, a, a great human warrior brought back to life by these fucking valkyrie it was just a whole thing to this so i, I guess i was here for every little thing that they were fucking doing because i just felt like it was just it made the situation more fucking exciting in my opinion all right to- so look i mean the of the three fights that we got in season one, I only knew that I only knew about one of the human characters. That's it. I only knew about one of them, and that was Adam, because everybody knows who Adam is. But yet the other two characters, Lubu, I had to look him up before I was able to even understand who he was. And then the other character, what the hell are you doing, Cat? Um the other character, the one that was able to defeat Poseidon, uh, I have uh, to this day, like to, to like right now, I have no idea who he is. I don't. Was it, was it K- Kajiru? I think um, something like I, that. Look, I I have never been good with Japanese names. Yeah, I've no. never been good with them. It's just like I mean, I have a like I know I've said before that I'm good at understanding names i'm good at pronouncing them but when it comes to japanese names i am horrible at it i am terrible with japanese names i think it was kajiro the the only reason i really recall that is because the crowd kept chanting his name and i was just thinking of the old asian guy at the start of the 98 godzilla movie but he kept just saying godzilla godzilla and it was like that except yelling so it it was something like that kajiro no it couldn't be kajiro that's yeah, yeah maybe. But no, and then of course uh, at the end of season one we find out who the who the fight's going to be at the beginning of season two, which I'm like, really, that's who you're going to have. The next fight is going to be Hercules, or if you get the pronunciation right, it is Heracles. Uh, well, Hercules, and... John Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Me, Hercules. Hercules. But the actual pronunciation of the name is Heracles. Um, And uh, it's Heracles versus, believe it or not, Jack the Ripper. Oh, my God. Uh, It did look cool. I did like the character design for Jack the Ripper. Yeah, yeah. The character design for Jack the Ripper was cool, but that's pretty par for the course for anime. They don't. They yeah. do go. They do go all out for character designs in anime. Like they, they, they do kind of go crazy. Oh, and how about we bring up this this one thing that I like to bring up, and Damien knows what I'm talking about. I do. I sus- well, I suspect I do. Big fucking tits. <laughs> See them tits? Big <laughs> fucking tits. Yeah. <laughs> Just right there, right, right there. <laughs> yeah, being being held up by statues. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Aphrodite's giant tits, a couple of statues, just holding them up. They were statues. They didn't move. I don't think so. No, I no, thought, they were they were statues. They were. I thought the I thought those guys moved. I, I swore. No, I no, swore. they they weren't moving. Those were definitely statues. <laughs> I mean, I something you. moved when I was watching it, but it wasn't the statues. <laughs> <laughs> but Damien was, you know, what I'm saying was was Zeus not, you know, what I'm saying was Zeus not fucking King Kai? Or, uh, King no, Kai. Was he was he not yeah, Rose pretty much Rose. exactly. Even down to the like, from being a shriveled little man to being just fucking ripped as fuck. Oh my God! Where, where have I heard King Kai before? Isn't that a DBZ reference? 
Yes, they both are. Yeah. King, King Kong's the fat blue guy. Oh yeah, like, that's uh, right. As the uh, that planet in the afterlife. Yeah, not really a. Pl- yeah, it is a planet. That's right. Yeah, I, 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 a little, look, little like little desert island planet thing that he's got. It's been fucking forever since I've watched DBZ, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but uh, no, and, it's, and yeah, Master Roshi is Zeus, <laughs> pretty much exactly. Yeah. Yes. Right down to the right down, us and all. Yeah, right down to the creep factor too. Yep. <laughs> I can notice there's someone across the stadium starts so making kissy faces. Oh my god. Like coming in his little See? fucking whatever it was he was wearing. Old man clothes. <laughs> <laughs> See, Charles, I, I understand. The, the thing is I'm trying to help you with is I understand if you have criticisms. I get it. You may, you know, what I'm saying you may feel like there, there's, a, there's a way, there's a way to, to build that up or to, or to create that context or to give the backstory. Sometimes, but some, you know, I guess in a way, you know, with a 24, honestly, I truly believe with a 24 minute show, I just don't think that you just go right into the fighting and they're just fucking fighting. It's just so much, it's just so much more. Because there's so much more to it than that. I mean, when you think about well, some of the names that that, that are going to, you know what I'm saying, that are mentioned, you know what I'm saying, in this, you know, I mean. Look, look, I get that, that, that they that they probably didn't see any other way to do it that way. I get that. But it doesn't change the fact that them doing those exposition dumps the way that they did was still distracting. And it's still kind of ruined the moment for me it did it ruined it because i was getting enthralled in the fight and i was getting pumped up the adrenaline was flowing i was going like yeah it's gonna get real intense it's gonna get fun get pumped get yeah get pumped (laughs) and then we get to an exposition dump and then all that adrenaline just got tossed out the fucking window. And I'm like, oh, not, 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 for, not for me, because it makes you feel like because then it makes you feel like that. the You know, what I'm saying? that the God is just not going to trash whoever they got to fucking fight. You start you start realizing you start realizing that the Valkyries are, you know, what I'm saying, are, are forming themselves in the weapons, you know, what I'm saying for the, you know, what I'm saying for the human fighters also. So you just feel like it's going to be more of a contest. It's not going to be something that, OK, good try, but. You know, ultimately they're gonna go down. You you feel like there might be a fucking chance, you know. So I think that was the fucking. I think that was one of the bigger things for me. And I think just just because it's because you got this whole thing going on, and, and they're coming out and they're making big reference, you know, making this whole thing. I mean, think about Poseidon's. You know what I'm saying? Think about Poseidon's fucking fucking entrance. You know, what I'm saying? into the arena and everything like that. I mean, they they did a whole lot to really build up. Like even them entering into the into the damn into the damn ring as it were, or to the damn arena, or into the damn mat, or whatever the hell you call it, you know, it's just like to see all of that, and then to not have this guy who's announcing to give some to give some backstory and whatnot to at least to you know because because while we do know from more more times than not, but they were giving even more of a story to Poseidon and and to these gods and and. And at least to, to his God circle and everything like that. It was just, to me, it was fun. To me, it was fun, action-packed, little 24 minutes and being able to bring that in there. And just, there's no way I felt like, I, I wouldn't have been satisfied if it would have been like one fight each episode, the whole fight happens that episode. And no, nah, I just wouldn't have been satisfied with that. I have to be honest. Okay. I will, say the, I will say they dragged the first fight out way too long. That was like four episodes, pretty much. Hold up, you mean with with uh, with Thor and Lubu? Yeah, that was like that was like th- I want to say like three and a bit episodes. Yeah, uh, okay, but but you, I mean, it's fucking Thor though. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and he looked like a he looked like a oh. <laughs> you know what? You yeah, look like a hole. Oh, oh. I'm I'm going to say that <laughs> I hated that fucking design. He looked yeah. terrible. He looked. He looked like emo Thor. That's what he looked like. Yeah, this bright red hair. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> wrecking looked, dudes with his big fleshy hammer. He looked like he was about to go to a My Chemical Romance concert. 
I mean, look, man, Thor, God of Thunder. I mean, you, you know how you know how wild and out there he was, and in, in, in the different changes. I mean, I mean, it's like world. You know what I'm saying? It's, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is the world breaker Thor. You know, at, at this point, you know. No, no, no. The real Thor is the Thor that is my avatar. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course everybody loves everybody loves Chris Hemsworth. But what I'm saying is, what if what if that Thor on record of Ragnarok was like was like that version of Thor, like world breaker Thor, you know? Yeah. Well, all right. All right. I'm probably well, like look, by saying what I just said is also going to get some criticism because some people would argue that the real Thor is like the Thor from Norse mythology, which of course is accurate. So I retract what I had said. Chris Hemsworth is not the real Thor because the real Thor is also a redhead, not blonde. And not Australian. So, that is also so true. So Record of Ragnarok got it right. Ah, yeah, still just didn't like it, it though. They got it partly right. <laughs> They Come got on, the ha- they got the hair right. They got the hair right. He's still emo though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could I, I wouldn't imagine if you, if you became a world if you became a world breaker. I mean, you might be a little emo too. Yeah, but no, it's and let's let's talk about the hammer, okay? Yeah. Like the hammer is some living organism that pulsates like a fucking heart. I'm yeah, sorry. it's fleshy inside, like. Yeah. Yeah, Fuck. that that made my teeth hurt. Okay, just just looking at that just made my fucking teeth hurt. I was like, ah, man, give me a fucking toothache. Because that that's not a thing, right? No, it's not. <laughs> I didn't. I, I was gonna say, I feel like I would have heard of that before if if Mjolnir was this fucking living thing. No, it's really like, not. I mean, according to the legend, Mjolnir was crafted. From an unbreakable metal from uh, that was forged in the heat of a dying star, I think. Which is pretty fucking metal. It is, but uh, but yeah, it was crafted by dwarves. I mean, it's like that whole thing of it being a living organism. Yeah, that is not from like Norse mythology. That is not accurate at all. So I was going to look that up. I was like, have I somehow missed that all these years? Or are they just, just no. making shit up? No, no, no. It's uh, it's supposed to be an unbreakable metal that was created by the dwarves. That's I mean, supposed to be don't... heavily conductive to electricity. I mean, the thing looked like a fridge, first of all. Well, yeah. It's like, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> And did, I mean, and Damien, what did you think about his glove drop, though? I mean, come on. Was oh, that yeah, the glove drop. I mean, it, was yeah, good. It, it takes off the glove, and then as soon as it hits the ground, it makes a small crater. I mean, yeah. I mean, and the thing looked like it dropped. It looked like it dropped as, as light as any other glove would. You know, when he dropped it, that's the thing that was fucking yeah, always pretty much chasing floated me. down like a like a feather, and then just. <laughs> I just thought thing I just, must be dense. Yeah. Like it just shows you, it, it just shows you, it just shows you the crazy power that he has to that he has to figure out ways to kind of contain, you know, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's the only way to keep him from just fucking like, I don't know, maybe it's maybe weighing you know, so maybe weighing some of that power down, dulling it down from him going completely like Gonzo, completely Gonzo world breaker and just fucking like destroying every goddamn thing. <laughs> That's it, because he's one bad day away from just yeah, destroying everything. So yeah, that, that that's why I fucking like it. They gave so much fucking like to me, I just felt like when shit like that would happen, it just built it just built it up. Like 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 I get what you're saying. Like a, a part of me does get what you're saying. You know, we we're getting into the fight, let's get into the fight. But a part of me just felt like another part of me just felt like to do it all, to do a fight like that, to do Zeus versus Adam in fucking one episode. I'm just like, nah. There's no way that could there's no way it, it could be done in just one episode. And then you're telling the story, and then you're telling their version of the story of Adam. Like, what did you think about I did like the Adam flashback? I did enjoy that sequence. The snake, the scent of like Cobra Commando. (laughs) 
Come here, you little bitch. Now, oh, look, she ate the apple, that harlot. <laughs> I mean, it was just like like I said. I think, I think, like I said, making us through with arms. <laughs> That's the devil right there. <laughs> I'm telling you. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, look, your your criticism is valid, Charles. I'm not saying it's not valid, but the, but to say it made the whole show suck, it's just a lot. It's just a lot more going on to where you. I mean, it's just to me. To me, I think it's a lot more going on positive that outweighs the the potentially negative, the arguably negative, you know, the potentially negative like interludes between the fights and everything like that, but. It makes it makes for an exciting backstory. At least for me, it got me feeling like okay, they might have a fucking chance here. Because I'm still thinking like okay, Adam versus Zeus. Like what the, you know, what I'm saying like it's just Adam. He's like the first guy. Like what the, you know, like fucking. Yeah, was he gonna take his leaf off? And Zeus just like ah, oh, yeah, get out of here. Neil Leaves. Armstrong wasn't a superhero because he was the first guy on the moon. I mean, it was just, you know, hey, he's the first guy. I mean, what, what the fuck? But then you realize okay, they're they're telling you this. Fucking story, like holy shit! So you mean to tell me he's like, he knows, like he he knows shit without even knowing, you know? It's like all all that martial arts shit, like he's exhibiting, like he knows without knowing, you know? It's just like okay, that's so fucking weird. And then, but then the, that have that whole build up, and then to break your heart like that because he's still human, and even though he has that ability, he's still not a god, and his body could not fucking take it. And like it dies in front of his kids. Yeah, that was the fucking. That was a fucking heartbreaker. They're like, damn, you think, oh my God, he he could possibly do this. Let me look what he's fucking doing. And then and Poseidon. Who knew Poseidon was such a was such a bastard, huh? Yeah. Well, is it even in Greek mythology? I always thought Poseidon was a bit of a dick. Really? He tends to be, yeah. yeah. Really? Did I miss something? Please please elaborate on that. I mean, well, all the gods it, are dicks, it, really. It's, it's been much. a while since I read into Greek mythology, but I, from what I remember, I always thought Poseidon was always a bit of a dick. Because he would I do. Know. Because what, what, what would he do in particular? Because, I mean, I just felt like. Like I know, said, it's been a while, but from what I remember, it's just, yeah, just. I, I, rem I don't remember specifics, but I remember him being a bit of a dick, yeah. But they just really, they really framed, they really framed it on this show. Like it's just like extreme fear from everybody, you know. It's just like extreme fear. Like he's like the whole crowd muted, you know. When he looked, you know, when he looked at him, like, he was like, "Wow, the fuck!" And I never, I never knew that it was this type of shit with Poseidon. Well, I mean, Poseidon is the god of the ocean, and so he, yeah, oh, you just god don't go in the. You, you would think you just don't go in the water, you, you know. What I'm saying? Well, you you don't fuck with the ocean, dude. I won't dip my toe in, sir. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, you, yeah. It's just you, you, you stick your toe in the ocean. I mean, he he knows you're there. He gets a bit of a tickle. <laughs> yeah, you stick your toe and go like, "Whoo!" It's like, "Whoo!" <laughs> I didn't. I, I, just, I didn't. I didn't realize Poseidon was such a war god. Is is all? Is what I'm oh, saying? No, I, mean, I, I knew that. I mean, I I knew that he like. Well, I mean, because um. What what's the what's the expression? You can't tame the sea. I think it's the expression. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I I just really never, I never thought of that. I mean, this. But what do you guys think overall? Just this kind of overall the whole, like all these gods being like one giant committee. Like what like what do you think about that? Um, I find that that was actually something that I thought was interesting. I like that. Uh, one one other criticism I have, I did not like that they changed uh, Shiva, the god with the four arms. Uh, in Hindu mythology, Shiva is a woman, not a man. Okay, I, okay, so that okay, okay, all right. Well, then that I thank you for that because I was definitely wondering about that. Like, yeah, Shiva is supposed to be a woman. And um, uh, I thought the change to a man was weird uh, and didn't really understand the change. I was like, why? Like, what What was there to be gained for doing something like that? Okay. I mean, maybe a little bit of, I mean, I, I, I dare I say it, because, but, 
but this is this is what we do here when we review shows. I mean, we gotta gotta explore all things. I mean, maybe a bit of chauvinism, you know what I'm saying? As it were, you know, feeling like you know, they feeling like depicting Shiva as a woman to go out there and fight. I guess they just didn't they didn't like that. I mean, because I mean, after all, you had Aphrodite just sitting over there having her breast held. You know, saying when she was oh, you know, so was so saying that uh, Shiva couldn't be a, a couldn't be a woman because they said that a woman couldn't fight in the in the competition. They did give respect to the Valkyries and what they were doing, but I just you know, so it wasn't like it wasn't like it was a complete why it was a complete across the board chauvinism, but it just seemed like. <laughs> For the God Warriors, it seemed like it just wasn't. It just wasn't a lot of opening. I mean, and, and that right there, the one, the one opening that could be definitely recognized as a female, you know, Shiva was was basically transitioned to a male. So that should tell you a lot right there, I guess, as far as what they felt like females in direct combat in this whole tournament. I guess, you know, so. Hate to say it. I mean, I like the show, and I hate and I hate to say that it was some sort of that it was some sort of you know, it was some sort of doubt on females as warriors that made them feel like. But then there's the Valkyries. Yeah, that's always going to be the weird dynamic with, with something like that. Is because you can say that and say, well, no, Shiva can't be a woman and be out there, you know, and and battle in this tournament. It doesn't look right. But then you have the Valkyries. They're female. And you have some of them that seem really fucking young, but they're fucking Valkyries, though. You know, it's just like it, it's just like, but so it, it kind of lets you know that that even these that even these girls that seem that seem very young, they're still, you know, what I'm saying they're still fucking like Viking warrior females, you know, what I'm saying, and that are still badass. But it's like, and you have that, but it's like, so why are you still having this doubt that that Shiva should still be a woman and should be in a tournament fighting? They're just. It was kind of it's kind of weird. I, that's why I was kind of didn't register at first. Like, did they really? I was like, I, I thought Shiva was a woman, and what woman or goddess? So did they? Did they change? I'm like, it confused me at first. I was like, okay, maybe I, you know, so maybe I was thinking something different. But I'm like, I could have sworn it was a female though. But yeah, I, I was kind of like you on that. I wasn't sure. I wasn't as sure as you, but I was definitely thinking that that wasn't what I always. You know what I'm saying? Thought that it was a that Shiva was a male. <laughs> I'm like Shiva doesn't seem like a female name anyway, but I, I still. But no, was. according according to uh, like when I was younger, I looked into like different mythologies and different cultures. I studied Greek, I studied Roman, I studied Egyptian, Norse, I studied um, Chinese, Japanese, uh, a little Chinese. bit. Uh, a little bit of Chinese, a little bit of Japanese. Um, I studied Hindu, um, and in the Hindu religion, uh, I learned about Shiva, and Shiva is uh, predominantly female. Yeah. Hmm, that's an interesting word you use with that. Predominantly. Yeah, like in regards to Shiva's appearance, she is. It is female. Yeah. Okay. It is okay. female. Yeah. You said predominantly. I was just like, did, is there like a, a testicle hanging somewhere? It's like it's mostly a woman, but I probably wrong choice of words. So yes, I mean, in and regards for, to Shiva's appearance, female. And for and for me, the reason and for me, I was thinking that maybe some people, some people might have told might have told the story, or or that mainly the story is told that Shiva is female. Then that maybe some tell the story that that Shiva, you know, what I'm saying may have been male. Or whatever, or may have been some kind of ambiguous, whatever, whatever. I, I don't know. That's what I was thinking. That's why. That's what I was thinking when when you said predominantly female. That's what I was kind of thinking about that. You know, more than anything. Not, but not wrong so choice of words. Then I choose not weird, the wrong choice. Not weird, of like words. a balls hanging, but just <laughs> you know, nothing like that, sir. But no, no, no. Then, then let me then let me rephrase. Shiva is female. So but I don't, but when I say predominantly, I, it's because I say um, that the, the the words male and female don't have the same meaning to divine beings the same way they do to humans. See, yeah. again, I, I'm I'm with I'm tracking with you on that. So that's why I was kind of saying that you know, the different. Call, I mean, and that's why. Look, and I know, 
And I know that Vikings overall are like, are like a hard, you know what I'm saying? Are like depicted as hard men. I, I get you on that. But they do, but they've always been depicted as having long, luxurious hair, Charles. You have to admit that. You have to admit that. Well, yeah. Take a look at Odin in Record of Ragnarok. Look at his, his like locks of hair. Well, I've seen those shows. They should, now, they try to give those guys, some of those guys, short haircuts. But overall, Vikings have been depicted as having long, luxurious hair. And so I wouldn't know, call it luxurious. I mean, I mean well, okay. it's bushy. It would have been pretty filthy too, probably. Yeah, it's filthy, bushy and filthy, like like frizzy. Uh looks like Gina from Scarface's hair. <laughs> yeah. Only not as clean and tidy. Uh messy, probably some twigs and some leaves, maybe a bird's nest in the back. Bit of dried blood here and there. Yeah, maybe some bone from a guy they just killed. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'm just saying. I wasn't saying it was a pro commercial. I'm just saying it was long. Okay. I'm just, just you know, you know, luxurious. Okay. Maybe, maybe again because uh, again, Vikings are a are, are hard, scurvy men with you know what I'm saying that that hardly that hardly bathe, but but love the fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, it's, it's a bad combination. I mean, look, it's, it's bad enough. You're gonna. It's bad enough to have a guy you know grape and pillage, but it's like he's not gonna shower either. You know, did you just, just you know, say grape and pillage? Yeah, yeah I did. Because we know we, we don't want to go saying that oh, thing. All right, I was going to say, it's just like, yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. So definitely the pun was intended. I just, you know. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I like grapes. I do. I like grapes. Whoa, I like grapes. Hey, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the fruit. I'm talking about the fruit. That's what I'm talking about. You, you like grape and about- fruit? No, 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 no. I like the fruit. I like the fruits. I like black seedless grapes. I like red seedless grapes. And I like that's it. It's just, yeah. A bit of diversity in, in your life. I like that. So you mean grapes when you use a condom? Okay, seedless. Okay. Oh my you. God, you no, asshole. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm done. I am done. <laughs> I am done. <laughs> I am you done. assholes. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I tried. That's why I tried, tried to go another way, but look, it's just I'm just saying. I'm just saying that basically that basically with the show, I just I feel like I don't know. I, I just feel like with something like that, you feel like there's gonna be a bit of a bit of pause, a bit of fanfare, a bit of because because you have to do because what they're also doing is that they're introducing certain people that are connected, that are connected in certain ways, you know, to that, you know, to that warrior, to that god or to that warrior that bring more historical reference to the situation. Now, granted, we're, we're gonna I'm gonna say this, we're gonna say this, granted, they they get very creative with the backstories as we've heard you know fleshy fleshy refrigerator hammer you know it's just you know playing this saturday at the mercury lounge you know it's just i understand you know i, I understand they, they get creative because you know they don't want to they don't want to i like the fact that they didn't want to just go basic into the situation and making the thor hammer what it was always known to be and then making it something a little bit more a little bit more demonstrative, a little bit more mysterious, even you know, even more mysterious than what it was before. I thought it was kind of fun. You 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 have to understand, like, again, it's more of a suspend your belief. They're trying to they're trying to root the creativity in the in the historical in the historical reference, but they're being a little bit more creative with it. So that is it's more fun. I think you know I think it worked in my opinion. Do you guys? I'd, I'd say it it worked and it didn't at the same time, and that's probably it depends on what the cutaway was. Like I said, I like the Adam and Eve one. Some of the other ones, I, yeah, I got a little bored. Okay, I get that. It's not that I didn't really care about what was going on. It was more just yeah, you know, just got kind of bored during those sections. Okay, I definitely and, get that. 
Like, to be honest, I didn't like the Adam and Eve one all that much. And I didn't like the other one, the one with uh, the guy that was going up against uh, Poseidon. I didn't like his either. Oh, the, the, well, the, uh, the world's greatest loser. Yeah, the only one that I actually kind of liked was Lubu's. Where well, you're standing on top of that mountain? No. Breaking all the spears? That that was the only one that I kind of liked, and the one the part that I liked the most about Lubu's is it was right after his legs got broken. It was right after his legs got broken where he like blocked uh, Thor's attack with his hammer, with the spear or the howl. That was brutal. Yeah, he that was pushing brutal. the ground a bit, and then those legs just fucking wrench. Yeah, that's where his legs got broken. And then the horse came up behind him, and the horse just looked at him. And Lubu got up on the horse. And before Lubu even got up on the horse, I, I realized what was going to happen. And I was like, Lubu's going to ride the horse. And they're going to they're gonna do a, a mounted attack. And, and I, I was just like, we... Um, just like the, the that's when I saw that that whole flashback thing there, and I don't know. It's just I don't know. I, I like that part, and then the music playing in the background at that part. That scene I did like. I appreciated it. I thought it was well done, and I and I I didn't have a problem with it. Except for the part where Lubu, where Lubu was chasing at Thor, and he like he had ripped off his own arms, so he had no arms. Chewed no it off. He, Fucking he, chewed the arm off. Yeah, he chewed his own <laughs> arm off. Yeah, chewed his own arm off, and he chased after Thor, and then the music was playing, and he was roaring at Thor, and then Thor just ripped his own head off. Roar, uh, Thor like took off Lubu's head. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's that then. <laughs> what yeah, did you I, think of the crying horse? You ever seen a oh, horse cry before? Actually, I have. Really? I have, yeah. If what a did horse, you do to it? I, didn't, it was, I wasn't there. I saw it on <laughs> video. <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's but right. um, no, it's just, if a horse has a strong enough connection with its owner, and let's say the owner gets injured or if the owner passes away, the horse can then feel the pain of the loss of their owner passing away and they will mourn that passing. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, yes, a horse can cry. Yeah. Does it also gain the ability to look forward in real life? What do you mean? I, you know, eyes facing <laughs> directly ahead. Oh, um, I thought you meant like look forward, like uh, like like keep moving forward, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> they know how to deal with grief; they can move on. They're uh, resilient. Um, look forward. Uh, their eyes, like they don't. What a question! Forget it. Just forget it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're asking. <laughs> I, have I don't never, know anymore either. I have never <laughs> tended horses. I don't have horses on my property. But you've seen a horse before. I have at somebody <laughs> else's property. <laughs> and was it looking at you when it was crying? It wasn't crying when I was there. <laughs> it was just staring at me with some deadpan look while it was chewing on straw. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. It didn't even do this. It didn't even do that. It just what a terrible at, horse. It, and then it, it just looked at me with a deadpan look, and then it just went back to whatever the fuck it was doing. <laughs> it just, I mean, it was just being a horse. That's all it was doing. <laughs> Horses can tell the future by looking sideways. Well, wow, I've learned something today. That's why they do that. Yes, horses. They're seeing are the, all possible, all possible futures. Any horses given time. are the Nostradamus of animals. <laughs>
God bless them. They can look into oblivion and they can tell you your future and their future is bleak. <laughs> and it catches a glimpse of those big fucking tits. Everything's <laughs> not so bad anymore. My favorite horse, of course. Of course, that, of course. That was unexpected. <laughs> that was unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> but no, my favorite horse is the is the laughing horse from disenchantment never seen that's the um matt i still don't know how to pronounce his last name matt groaning uh matt groaning groaning yeah that's his show right uh yeah it, it's no longer it's it's done they finished the show but two seasons i think three uh, maybe five five shit yeah five yeah the new season just ended. The final season ended recently. Okay, like a proper final season or a canceled oh, yeah, final yeah, season? Yeah, a proper final season. Hmm. They, they only intended on doing five seasons. Yeah, I might have to look into it now then. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Uh, disenchantment. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I liked the show. I thought it was fun. But yeah, the last... It definitely movie, looked interesting. Yeah, the Laughing Horse is one of my favorite characters on that show. He's so fucking funny. Now, that's yeah. something I've never seen a horse do for a fact. Never seen a horse laugh. They what smirk they sometimes, but What do they have it. to laugh about? That? Just, they, if they underperform, they get sent to the glue factory. <laughs> Say that again. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was mainly a broken leg underperformed. Like, geez. I thought it was a broken leg, really. <laughs> to the glue factory with you. Nay. <laughs> Better win that yes. prickness. Nay. Win that prickness. Yes. Better win that prickness next week. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez. What's going on, man? Just put him out, just put him out the pasture. You know what I'm saying? Let them roam free somewhere. What the fuck's wrong? Well, man, you put them out the pasture. That just means that's just slang for killing them. And then you send oh, them to the glue oh. factory. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. You know, but I mean, let them walk the earth like Kane from Kung Fu. <laughs> what I mean Damn is, you like, know. Just, you get that just, reference now. I mean, just have, just have them out there. You know, he, he can make other champions. You know, you don't have to fucking, you know, like, nah. I mean, and even that broken leg thing is kind of weird for me still. I gotta be honest with you. Even that thing is kind of weird for me, but I try to, I try to stomach that. But yeah, underperforming, no way, man. Is it that the leg won't heal, or just no one wants to look after a fucking useless horse for like six weeks? I think that the main people who do that, I think, <clears throat> are the people who are only looking at the horse as a racehorse. And then once, and then once you get a leg break like that, it's gonna be hard to because because again, no one has, no one is really a horse psychologist. So, as an athlete, as a, as a human athlete, when you when you have an injury, and you and you recover from it, and you try to go back and play again, it's always the fear that you know so you'll exacerbate that injury again. You know, so it's always the mental thing, even though you might feel pretty solid, you know, on it or with it, it's still that mental thing that messes with you that you might that that you might exacerbate it again and it might be worse or something like that. So it's like trying to get through the mental recovery along with the physical recovery. But the thing is, there's no way to really help a horse's mental recovery if they're having if they're dealing with that same fear of being in a horse or of being in a race and having that same thing happen or even worse you know so i guess i guess some people just don't want to just don't want to deal with that and just decide that they're that they're just useless horses useless animals you know so just take the loss and just the loss well, they're oh, yeah they're take the losses and they've got to get another horse yeah, yeah, because I mean they're paying, they're paying a few thousand dollars for a fucking horse 
that can net them that they're, they're looking to net them hundreds of thousands of not millions of dollars so and they're not paying and they're not even, and they're most times depending on if you got a legendary made horse that you might might buy that horse or they might try to charge up for its progeny but other than that you're not going to pay like what that horse can earn no one no one really pays what you know, the potential you know, what, what a horse what a good race horse that can win these damn things could potentially earn so taking a loss yeah it's just more that's why that's why they can so easily glue factory them because you know they can go out and now they, they've made all they made hundreds hundred thousands of dollars on this horse now they've now they've done away with that one and they, they can take they can take a small portion of those of those winnings and buy themselves another you know some prime race horse and then potentially get back what they spent on that horse in like oh, you know oh, one race trust potentially and, and, and those small and, and, and those small races leading up to the big ones leading up to the kentucky derby the preakness and all type of shit like that those things can net you money those people betting and everything like that and all all, all the other things that are going on that grease the wheels of the you know say of these horse races that, that that's where you that's where you're making that money at and then and then it's like you qualify to get into those big and into those big races, like I said, the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and whatnot, you get there and you can really make some serious money, get a trophy, get some get some serious status for that, you know, say for that person stable and everything like that. And eventually, as that horse wins more races, they become legendary, and then people want to buy horses from them. See, it's so much more money to be made than what a person spends on a horse. Because, like I said, then when you think about the people that want to now, now you're, you know, because I forgot what the third race is, but you know, saying, but when a horse becomes a triple crown winner and they do it a couple times, even or whatever, then now people want to go and they want to buy their offspring. I want to raise a horse and possibly have them win those big, you know, saying those big tournaments like you know, like this one. It's like they're just making money hand over fist. Trust me. And you want to go? Okay, <laughs> we'll take that. So yeah, it just I'm sorry. It's, yeah. That was terrible. Trust me. No, no, it was good. Trust me, it was good. And we're and we're making pretty good time to where the where Jim should be. The where Jim should be ready to come in and speak about the other one because I think well, just I want I wanted to uh discuss uh my my thoughts on the Gran sure. Turismo movie. Sure. Oh yeah, no problem. Um then, maybe then, we can, maybe, then we can go didn't. into Saw, uh, Pulp Fiction, and uh, Scarface after that. So uh, Pulp, Pulp Fiction, Scarface, and Saw. Oh, so Pulp Fiction, Scarface, and then Saw. Okay, but no, I'll, I'll give my my quick thoughts on Gran Turismo. Uh, do you guys give give a shit about spoilers? No. Um, it's, it's Gran Turismo, though. I mean, there's people who heard the story. People who heard about the story, though, you know. Okay, so you, in other words, you guys don't give a shit about spoilers. I mean, see, what I'm saying is, it's like, look, do you consider when you read when you read the comic book before the movie comes out, Charles? Do you consider what happens in what happens in the movie spoilers? If somebody tells you what happens in, in, in the movie, no. you read it. See, that, that's kind of how I look. I heard, I'm a gamer. I'm, I'm a lifelong gamer. I heard the Gran Turismo story. So it's really not like spoilers for me. Because I mean, because I heard okay. about this story. Fair enough. All right. Well, <laughs> actually, yeah, wait. Hold on a second. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, okay. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Bam. Oh, Thank God. you to Becky for the graphics. God damn it. It's Weed Ends Review Corner. You know, that... Pro uh, proper theme incoming, maybe. Proper theme incoming. Oh, God. Maybe. I, I gotta move my cat. <laughs> All right. Ugh. Is that gonna stay up during the entire thing? No, I just remembered I had it. <laughs> yes, but thank you, Becky, for, for, for making that. That that looks great. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, yes. 
Uh, I watched Gran Turismo uh, a few days ago, uh, and it was probably, at least in my opinion, one of the best movies that I had watched this year. Holy shit, I freaking loved the movie. I mean, when did it come? Like, when did it first it, come out? Was it earlier this year? Uh, no, not earlier this year. I think it only came out a little over a month ago. Really? A lot yeah, of build up. A lot of build up. Yeah, I guess that's of, what it was. I swear the trailer came out like last year sometime. Because you know, Dave, David Harbour was on like a, a you know, they, they wanted the they wanted the milk. You know, hockey season was happening too, and David Harbour was really high. He was like he was doing some promos for the you know the playoffs, I, and bro. they just really wanted the milk as much David Harbour promo as they could lead into this movie and everything like that. So. And yeah, then he did your favorite movie. Which is? That ghost. And that movie Stone was in love with. Oh, oh yeah. Wouldn't stop talking yeah. about it. Uh, I think we have a ghost, Stone. I think, I think we have a fucking flop. <laughs> I think we, yeah, because come on. No one's talking about that movie. No one's talking about it now. They, they, they ought to be glad that at one point in time, once upon a time, I wanted to talk about and debate this movie because no one's debating this movie now. No one cares about that movie. It was another, it was another just like Anthony Mack. The more I think on Anthony Mackie's career, the more I realize he took a lot of shit to get to to get to the Marvel universe. He really did. He took a lot of shit. He, you know, Spike Lee movie, you know what I'm saying? Just th different things. He took a, you know what I'm saying? He took a lot of, he took a lot of paying dues roles to get, you know what I'm saying? To get to the Marvel universe. And I, and I think he should, I think he shouldn't venture out too much more anymore. I think he should try to figure out what they're doing for him at Marvel and try to stick in there. Covet that because, you know, if, if, if we have a ghost as any indication, it's not a whole lot out there. It's not a whole lot out there that's going to make him look good outside of the Marvel universe. I'm, I'm just saying. I don't. He know was why. great at Twisted Metal. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you did get around to watching that? Okay. Yeah. Didn't, didn't we cover it a few yeah, weeks we ago? Did. We did. We absolutely did. Okay. But yeah. anywho, back to Gran Turismo. Um, the movie focuses on, on telling the story of uh, – crap, I'm trying to remember his last name. Um, uh, Jan Martinborough, is it? Jan Martin – am I pronouncing, yeah, am I, am I pronouncing I, I, it right? I think so. I only looked at it earlier, but it's a long name. But I, yes. that does sound good. Yeah, Jan Martinborough, uh, yeah, it's just um, – he is a uh, young man. Well, he was a young man at the time. He's an older man now, but um, well, he's still young. He's younger than me, but um, he he was a Gran Turismo player who participated in the GT Academy. Uh, ended up winning the academy and was and had the opportunity uh, to uh, drive race cars. And uh, I think he participated in Formula One, was it? And ended up winning. I think so. He ended up uh, ended up going into the Le Mans, uh, Le Mans track, and ended up winning. And there was a, like a whole slew of other uh, other race tracks that he did, and he is still doing race racing. And yeah, it's just over. I mean. The, the movie focuses on his journey to that point. And I don't know. So just, like it, the Le Mans is like the end of the movie? Yeah, the Le Mans was the last uh, race that he did in the movie. Okay. And, and uh, yeah, it's just, it, it was, it just overall, it was a great movie. And I got to admit, this movie did... Uh, made ra uh, did for me with racing what the Creed movies did for me for boxing. Like the Creed movies made me interested in boxing, just like this movie made me interesting in racing. I'm actually like, hey, I might want to 
check some out now. Yeah, I actually do want to go to go to like racing tournaments now. I do. I want. I like. My, I told. I told my grandfather that I'm actually interested in going to a race just to see it. And he said, like, hey, if there's something going down, going down at the Indy 500, he's gonna take me to, take me up there to go see it. And to be honest, because of the Creed movies, I'm actually interested in seeing a boxing match. I am. I'm actually interested to going to a boxing match just to see one. And with this Gran Turismo movie, I would like to see a racing a, a racing tournament. I would like to. It seems like an, an interesting fun time. Yeah, just the experience of it. Yeah, exactly. It just it was fun. Like the movie was probably the most intense movie I have ever seen this year. I haven't gone to that many movies this year. I have seen a lot of movies this year, just not not that many. But I mean, I I have seen a lot, but not that many. Yeah, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> but but um, I, I I've seen uh, quite a few movies this year. But I mean, this movie was probably the most intense movie that I've seen this year. And holy crap, it this movie was great. I plan on watching it again. Probably later today. And I was, I was surprised it was uh, Neil Blom. I, I'm going to say Blomkamp because you're saying know. it right. His last is name right? is it is Blomkamp. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised that he did it because it's kind of something different, something quite different for him. It's actually like a just regular kind of story. Yeah, yeah. It's just I'm surprised. I'm not surprised that he did. Oh, I mean, I am surprised that he did a movie like this. But I'm not surprised that the movie was good. I mean, because I mean, I, I mean, I have seen only two of his movies. Uh, well, now three. I've seen three of his movies now. But prior to this, I've only seen two. And the movies that he's done before this that I've seen was District Nine and Elysium. District Nine, I liked. Elysium, not so much. Elysium was, mm, I just, I, it didn't really click with me. It's just, I mean, it's not that it was a bad movie. It's just, it just wasn't my thing. I get what they it, were trying to do with it, but it just, yeah. just wasn't my thing. It's pretty much the consensus that I've heard from people, really. Like, the few people I know who have seen it is like, yeah, it's not bad. Like, it's not like, yeah, it's not like, oh, what is this garbage piece of shit movie? It just, for whatever reason, just doesn't really work like you'd think or hope it would. Well, I mean, the only other movie from Neil Blomkamp that I've heard about that I wanted to that I wanted to tr check out but never had a chance to was Chappie. Yeah, I do want to see that. Yeah, I wanted to see that Robot as well, but movie. I just... I just never had the chance to see it and I don't know where I can see it. So I'll probably end up watching sure. it eventually. Just, I don't know when. I think he's only got like five movies. You got district nine, Elysium, Gran Turismo, Chappie. And there's one other that came out like two years ago that I can't remember what it was called. It was a horror movie, I think. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, yeah, but no, um, no, Grand Grand Turismo was just it, it. It was it was a very good movie. I just I really enjoyed it. The, the racing scenes were good. There were certain moments in the movie that I thought were funny. There was a lot of funny moments. Like for example, uh, something that I learned about Yan Martinborough was that um, one of the thing one of his routines that he does to get him into the zone when he, right before a race is. He will listen to Kenny G and Enya to get him into the zone. He'll listen to that. Enya, really? Yeah, Kenny G and Enya. He'll listen to both of those to get him in the zone for a race. You guys don't get it on. And at the end, like, and at the end of the movie, it actually does like this whole like slideshow to like do the comparisons of the accuracies between the movie and the real world counterparts. And it actually says that the real world Yan Martinborough actually does listen to Kenny G and Enya to get him in the zone for the racing. So he actually does do that. 
Wait, it was like, no, it was Kenny Loggins that did Danger Zone, wasn't it? See, that's the thing. See, if people always think that it's like that's how you lock in. You 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 get something real action, pump you up, make you feel like a man, make you feel like you're gonna take on the world. You're gonna you're gonna shoot down some planes, and you know it's like yeah, we're gonna do this. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But it's like no, where I kind of want to be if I'm gonna be racing a high power, you know what I'm saying, going at extremely high dangerous speeds. I think I might wanna. I think I might wanna fucking just, you know. Like because Enya's like like ambient like flute music, right? Or music with flute. You want to zen out. You so you just kind of want to zen out, calm yourself, zen out. Like me, I might even I, I might even throw a little Chuck Mangione in there. Feels so good. You know what I'm saying? Just, I mean, yeah, I could see I could see that. I feel like I don't know. I feel like something like Enya might make me a bit too. Like I might just end up having a nap. But see, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. You know. You know that uh, the race you fucking fall asleep and just miss the race. Oh no, that race is gonna balance you out real good. You know what I'm saying? You know that that, that race is gonna balance you out real good. You you're not you're not gonna be able to sleep, but you'll be but you'll be. No, that's what I mean. Out. Like if I'm if I make it to the race, like yeah, put on some Enya, I might end up just having to sleep for a while. Yeah, well, there's a scene. There's a scene in the movie where, um. It's it's after Jan has his accident, and he's it's at I think it's at the Le Mans, and he is he is having a moment. I think it's a it's a PTSD episode. Um, it's a PTSD episode, and he is not passing the other cars in the race, and he's like lagging behind. And his pit boss that is being played by David Harbour, uh, he is saying, like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You need to win this race. Like, come on, get mad, get mad, get mad. And Jan is saying, like, look, I can't do it. I can't do it. And so what his pit boss decides to do is he takes his headphones off. He takes his little, like, music player, and he starts playing Kenny G and Enya in the fucking microphone and John at the same like, time no 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 like one after the other try to do it and everybody in the pit hears this because everybody can hear it and Jan is going like dude what the hell are you doing it's like what i'm sorry dude there's technical difficulties you can't hear like i can't do anything about it man it's and Jan's going like turn it off turn it off turn it off it's like no, no like what are you doing it's like are you mad are you mad it's like yes i'm mad i'm mad <laughs> It's like, good, get angry, get angry. And it's just, it's like, what are you going to do about it? It's like, I'm going to win this race. And I'm like, yeah, get it. Now go kick their ass. Yeah, see, just, that, see, see that, that doesn't, that doesn't ruin anything for me except for, except maybe for a little bit of the coolness factor that it was here in the story. I, I just hope it wasn't that I wasn't that campy in real life, but you know it, it's it's for the movie, so you know you, they, they got to play it up a little bit. But no, but, it's just that 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 scene right there was like, yeah, you said it yourself that you didn't care about spoilers. No, I don't. But no, it's just no that scene right there that 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 made me smile. I was grinning ear to ear that entire moment. I was la I was just grinning. I loved that part. It was so great. <laughs> Yeah, come on, man. Get down there. Jazz, they feel so good. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's just the movie. The movie was just, I was just smiling throughout the entire movie. And then, of course, I found out recently from our good friend Damien here that the woman that played Yan's mother in the movie was none other than Ginger Spice from the Spice Girls. Oh my God! It's just, how did I not Thank know you. that? It's just like yeah. We're, we're, okay, yeah, because 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 Charles because because yeah, from what we what I've known all these years, Charles equals big Spice Girls fan. No, I'm not actually a big a Spice Girls fan. Exactly. That's, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I I I he only pulls out those CDs when he needs to get pumped. <laughs> 
Look, look. I mean, I I listen to them like oh God damn it, really. (laughs) In his defense, Pete, like I looked up a picture when we were talking about it before the show. She still looks pretty damn good, and she would have to be like fifty something. Yeah. Surely by now. Even though I mean, like Victoria Beckham, I thought was hotter, but I mean. Yeah, then she turned into like a stick insect. That is true. Yeah, unfortunately, but she was she was like hotter in their prime, so yeah. Yeah, mm, I'm tr- trying to think back. I don't know. I have to do some research after the show. <laughs> Re- research? No, yeah, research. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> 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 Don't you shake your head at me, motherfucker. I got a new show idea for you and Charles, Damien. Oh, my Back God. Back into the 90s. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh... I'm in. I mean, the camera only goes, you know, to here, so. <laughs> Whatever happens like, down there is a mystery. Our, <laughs> we'll start playing you get away with it on YouTube. YouTube. We we'll start playing some Holly Minogue. We we'll start playing some Holly Minogue. We we'll start playing some, some 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 videos with Alicia Silverstone in it. You know what I'm saying? Like tap into the '90s, man. You see, I never thought that she was all that attractive, Alicia Silverstone. Oh fuck you! Come on, seriously, man. I never did. I never thought she was all that attractive. I never did. I, okay, you know what? Let me, let me change your mind for you. I say, watch the movie The Crush. You'll change your mind. I vaguely remember that movie. Trust me, if you watch it again, you'll never forget it. Yeah, you see, there's a reason why she's no longer relevant, dude. Oh, she just did a commercial. She just did a commercial. Oh, a whole <laughs> commercial. Ooh. I'm just saying. I, I gotta call the facts, man. Is all I'm saying. She has she has gained some some measure of relevancy. Is all I'm saying. Doing a commercial after being absent for fucking years is not relevancy. I'm trying to decide if a commercial is a step above or below Dancing with the Stars. Um, above. It, above, you reckon? You, you I guess because it's you do it one time. You do it one time. You keep getting paid. Yeah. You don't have to keep. You don't have That's to keep re- being on a commercial. You, uh. you, you record it once and it gets done, and you don't have to keep coming back and and, and redoing. A damn show, so yeah. yeah and you don't have to do the show where you're dancing and begging for judges' approval, and you probably yeah. get paid and a lot relevancy. more for a commercial. Yeah, and relevancy. By the way, you're begging for relevancy. By the way, don't forget that with Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, you're begging for relevancy. It's the it, it, it's a it's a nice little way to lull them and make them feel like they're not they're not really they're not really they're not, they don't deserve to be on the surreal life when they do. So it's dancing with the stars. It's the thing that makes them makes them believe that they're not really at that level of the surreal life just yet, but they are. Oh yeah, when you make it onto the surreal life, that's when you know you really made it. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> no, when you when you really gotta when, when there's nowhere to go but up. I was, I was no watching word. a Dave Chappelle special recently where he's like, if you see me on Dancing with the Stars, that's when you know this shit is over. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, he's in trouble, you know. He's, you know, sitting over there waiting on it, waiting on the score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I, I like I think I've pretty much covered all the covered all I need to say about Gran Turismo. Overall, it was a great movie. I highly recommend it. Um, rating review, I give it maybe a I don't know nine out of ten. So yeah, it's, for, for those oh, for those who for those gamers who know about the story, it is a great story. I definitely think that the they wanted a lot more promotion on it because because it's a story that kind of put the kind of centers in on I guess you could say a biracial. You know, individual who you know so who did this amazing thing, mm-hmm. you know, also so it is always going to be this struggle that a story that centers around a minority character can really, you know, saying can really basically make big budget, you know, saying numbers and things like this. But an inspirational story like this, you know, say a true story where you know, say where a kid rose to prominence from a video game into being a real racer. I mean, that that is really 
that that's really a tremendous story. And if they do all the scenes right, and it seems like when it, when it comes to Charles, they did a lot of the scenes right. They did a lot of the, you know, the, the racing because I mean, Gran Turismo is a very was a very ahead of its time game. You know what I'm saying? Also, so you know, great game to play. Oh, and the uh, the creator of the Gran Turismo video game is also in the movie as well. Yeah, so it's definitely a great game to play. I mean, I probably even put that slightly ahead of Need for Speed. I mean, yeah, I I could agree to that. Sort of, I guess it's definitely far more realistic. That's for sure. Very good. Nice, nice scenes. Nice, nice racing. You know, some nice tracks. I mean, it, it was it was definitely always a, a a nice game to play for sure. So I mean, and I think they I haven't played any since play. three, but the new ones look fantastic. Yeah, so I played the shit out of three. three. So you know, like, like I said, so you know, you got to deal with some of the more campy moments and things like that in the movie because it's a movie, and, and, and you got to have those moments. But I think overall, for those who know about the story, it's I think it's I, I agree with y'all. I think it's definitely great what they did, and I think they did a lot of promotion for it, a lot of build up, a lot of pulling you in with David Harbour so they can really give you the story of this kid who came up the way he did and everything like that. And, you know, really invest in the story and really invest in the, the amazing things that can happen in life. If you, you know, if, if you try and you, and you go hard enough at it, I guess some, some amazing things can happen. So I, I think that's definitely an overall, you know, perspective when it comes to this movie. So, and, and it's, and it's overall story. So, I definitely, you know, I definitely agree with Charles on that. Well done, you know. So, I me mean, aside from the campy moments, definitely well done. Also, did, did I miss it, Charles? Did you mention that the the real life guy does the stunts for the actor playing him in the movie? Oh yeah, I didn't mention that. Um, ah, the real life. Yeah, Jan, I thought that was that's a cool little thing right there. Yeah, the real life Jan Montenborough uh, does the the stunts for the actor that plays him. Yeah, which I thought was I thought that was pretty cool. That uh, yeah, I thought that was very cool. Just yeah, this, like, like, what would the stunts have been? I guess like it would have been like just being him in the driving sequences, or probably yeah. Hmm. But yeah, still like nice little reality woven in with a depiction of reality. Pretty much. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, no Jim either. He's got to go to an oil change, apparently. So uh, where do we go next? Pulp Fiction or Scarface? What do you want to start with? All right. So uh, just to be clear, Jim is not going to be joining us? No. All right. Uh, let's he go said with... To, uh, he said to apologize to the gentlemen. All right. So... Um... Let's go with um, let's go with Scarface. Okay. Let me just start with my name is Tony Montana. Fucking cockroaches. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I, I had to. I, I had to. But um, okay, so uh, Scarface was a interesting movie. And Gina from Scarface took her sweet time to show up. And she was not, I was not expecting her to be the character that she was. Um, I was expecting her to be something else. I was not expecting her to be Tony Montana's sister. You mean like, explain. So, so, so we're going into Pulp Fiction? I mean, we're going no, no, no. We're, we're going into Scarface. We're going into Scarface. Yeah, <clears throat> Jim's, uh, Jim's not showing up. He's got stuff. He's got uh, things to do. Yeah. Okay. But no, it's just um, in Scarface, um, I, I was not expecting Gina to be Tony Montana's sister. Like, I had never seen Scarface before, so I had no idea who these characters were. Like, well, me... I, I only knew who Gina was. I only knew about the character Gina because you had said Gina from Scarface because of the character that she played in Grimm. That's it. 
and, and yeah. let me and let me play. Which is, me, at the time was a guess. I just said that like, is it Gina from Scarface? It turns out, yeah, it is. Yeah. And allow and allow me to play the role of Charles here when it comes to this. Um, well, Scarface for those who may not know the overall legendary story, it's it basically centers around it basically centers around you know immigrants, those who were fleeing Castro from Cuba, um, and coming over to you know America to start a new life and things like that. And I guess in the and I guess for Tony Montana's family, well, particularly his mother, particularly his mother and his sister, they were able to flee. Like other people, it was like a, a big mass fleeing from Cuba, from Castro's rule and everything like that. So a lot of them were fleeing, but because he was more, I guess, more actively involved in the political and the political uprising against Castro, he got himself into some trouble, got locked up. He was kind of left behind you know, at that point. And then those guys are being seen as criminals and being seen as, you know, risky, you know, to be let into the country and things like that. But when they were really, you know, mainly fighting against Castro, it's all, you know, it's almost like a weird, you know, it's almost like a weird reverse, like Nelson Mandela story because Nelson Mandela was jailed mainly because he was being considered a terrorist and, and things like that because of what he did to, to show outrage against the laws and the apartheid that was that, that was plaguing that was plaguing his country, but at any rate, but but again, this goes in a way reverse, you know. But Tony Montana, of course, is now kind of being ushered into these internment camps where these people are not being let into the country, but they're still trying to figure out what to do with them because they're, of course, you know, they're fleeing. They're trying to flee Cuba and everything like that. So they put them in know. tents under a bridge. Yeah, really weird and, you know, really risky in, in itself <laughs> doing something like that. But, you know, Florida, you know, Florida is Florida. You know, what, what can you do? You know, <laughs> Florida has always been Florida. Or Florida has always been a little weird. So it's like, what, 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 what are you going to do about that? And but, yeah, he basically finds he basically finds himself a way through some connections to by if they're willing to help out a Castro sympathizer that was trying to escape, that they would be able to be granted, you know, it's a granted access into America through a different way. And, you know, it's got to figure out the American dream for themselves at that point. So that's kind of the overall context at that point. You know, we're dealing with I, guys. I kill a communist for fun for green cut and cut him up real nice. <laughs> yep. See, and that's what we're doing. It was political stuff that made that that hard it was it was the political issues you know the stuff going on at home the you know just just being made into a criminal being arrested for standing up for your rights that sort of made tony montana hardened you know even bitter in some ways and even being seen as more of a criminal when that really wasn't what he was trying to do you know and then you get into america and you see how people do in america and you realize that there's very few people that are truly just clean, squeaky clean. And everybody's doing their kind of dirt to get rich. You know, it, it's like it's not like he's this great villain. Like, 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 how do you like overall that, that's the, I think that's some of the reason why we watched. It was sort of like a tradition for some me and some of my friends when when our birthday would come around, we would like before we go out and do anything else, we would all kind of gather and watch Scarface for some reason. It was just part of what we, it was part of our, our birthday tradition. And, but it's like, you, you lament the drug dealing, but you, when you think about everything that went, it, it's a, when you think about everything that went on, everything that surrounded it, to me, it's a familiar story that can kind of create, you know, create people that, that, that feel like they got to do what they got to do. And they're seeing that, and they're seeing that the world they're entering, they're, another world that they're entering into is, is corrupt. People are people are corrupt. They're on the take. They're getting bribed. They're getting paid off. They're willing to they're, they're, they're willing to basically they're willing to compromise their authority, their power, their influence in order to get more money for their own greed and things like that. And you realize that you got to do what you got to do. People are taking drugs. They don't see you. They don't see you a certain way. It's going to be hard to gain legitimate work and it's going to take a long time to get where you 
feel like you want to be. And in a place like Miami, the the pull in the in the lure of that is just really strong. So, you know, I mean, what do you but what do you guys think? I mean, I, um, if I'm being honest, I enjoyed Scarface, but I didn't really follow all the, the, the messages of the movie. I didn't really follow all of it. I get it. I mean, it wasn't so much. Which Frank says, never underestimate the other guy's greed. Ah. I mean, to be honest, it was e- it was a lot easier for me to follow Pulp Fiction than it was for me to follow Scarface. It was a lot easier for me to follow. I would have thought the opposite, just because Pulp Fiction jumps around a lot. Yeah, but I, I mean, I that's what I've always been told. It's like Pulp, like I've always been told, even by my own brother. It's just like my brother loves Pulp Fiction. He loves Scarface too, but he he, he loves Pulp Fiction. And he's always told me that Pulp Fiction is is notorious for being very difficult to follow. You have to pay attention to be able to follow the damn thing. But when I was following Pulp Fiction, I was like, "What the fuck are they talking about? This is really yeah. fuck, this is really easy to follow." Like, what yeah, I would never about? have said it's difficult to follow. Like, it jumps around a lot, but uh, yeah, I've never had that issue with it. No, no, no. It's just I had no problem following Pulp Fiction. So even, no so, so, so even when so even when Vincent so even when Vincent gets shot, gets shot in the bathroom, yeah, you know, by you know what I'm saying by Butch. Yeah. But then but then we come, but then we come to an ending scene where Vincent and Jules are in a diner or in a diner, you know what I'm saying, getting robbed. You know, that that, that still doesn't kind of like hmm, huh? Oh no, I completely got it because the scene with him in the bathroom takes place after the scene of them in the diner and them after meeting up with Marcellus Wallace in the, in the, uh, the bar, um, uh, uh, where they first meet Bruce Willis's character. Yeah. It like I definitely could that. see how it could be confusing for people. Yeah, but no, I was able to pick up on that. Sure. No problem. Because yeah. at the diner, that's where Jules mentions that he's done. And then when they go up at the bar to meet up with Marcellus Wallace, that's where Jules tells Marcellus he's out, he's done. And Marcellus is like, okay, cool, you're done, you're out, see you later. And that's why Jules is not at the apartment where Vincent is. That's why Vincent is there alone. And that's why uh, Bruce Willis's character is able to get the jump on Vincent because Vincent is there by himself. Why don't yeah. take a nice relaxing shit, comes out... Yeah. Okay. Well, what a- we Charles. So, even, even in the first viewing, you still managed to be Charles. Even in, you know, even in your first yeah. viewing re- reaction. Yeah. And, and so so Jules going off on his own to walk the earth like some fucking bum prophet. Like, like came from Kung Fu. Yeah. Like it's came, called a bum, Jules. It's called a bum, Jules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jules going off on his own to walk the earth ends up getting Vincent killed. Yeah, dude, it's not rocket science. I was able to figure that shit out on the first fucking viewing. It's like, come on. <laughs> All right, Dr. Spock. All because Bruce Wallace. Ruin All because Bruce everyone's Wallace. Fun, Dr. Spock. <laughs> ruin everyone's fun and sense, of, and sense of whimsy when it comes to Pulp Fiction, Dr. Spock. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm like fucking Omni-Man from, from Invincible going like, come on. I still haven't seen that. I gotta, I gotta watch that show. Oh no, it's fucking great, and it's getting a season two as well. That's not out yet. It's not. It's it's coming out later this year, I think. Okay, I thought it was out already. Yeah. I think it's coming out in November, maybe. Hmm. I just wait till then and watch them both. Yeah. It's either October or November is when it comes out. Actually, I can look it up right now. Even though we're talking about uh, Pulp Fiction and Scarface, uh, let's see, Invincible, Invincible Season Two. Okay, let's see, uh, Invincible Season Two is uh, about. Uh, do I want to go to Rotten Tomatoes? Maybe. 
uh, say, uh, uh, yes. Um, but no, um, yeah, I know. I'm just, I, I'm providing dead air while I'm looking up Invincible <laughs> season two. Yes, I am. Yeah, su- me too. I, I'm just, I'm just playing with my goatee and doing yeah, nothing. Playing, just being a useless nothing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, jumped around a bit. So go back to Scarface. Yeah, Scarface. Oh, Scarface. So you found Scarface harder to follow. Why, like, uh, why? I don't or know. In, it's, it's, in what it's, way, I guess? I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with how old the movie is because it came out in the early 80s. That's what 80s. I've always... That's what, that's what I've always... That's what I've always noticed is that the older the, sto- the the content is, whether it's a show or a movie, the harder it is for me to follow. Because I just... I, I get disinterested a lot easier. Yeah, you're starting know. to sound like Lou now. Ah, don't. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was that was too far. I I apologize. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, it's just I don't know. I mean, there were parts of Scarface that I liked, but um, I don't know. It's just there was a lot about it that I didn't like as well. I mean, it's not that it's. I'm not saying that it was a bad movie. I recognize that it was a good movie. It's just. Mm, I mean, what did you think of Manny's pickup technique? Yay or nay? Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> no, I actually, I actually like. I saw that part where he was doing the thing with his tongue, and then of course, uh, Tony Montana said, "Like you look like a fucking reptile." It's just like, what's that? Want to grab it at your fucking muff? <laughs> yeah, and Les- then, uh, lesbian. And then of course, you I was like, lesbian. No. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, she's the problem. And then, of, and, and then, of course, when I saw him do that, I was like, really? Okay. I looked at my TV and I said, like, okay, Manny, uh, try and do that today. You walk up to a woman <laughs> nowadays, they're going to call the fucking cops on you, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll, you'll be all over X the next day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love when Tony grabs the kids, like, hey, kid, you want to see something funny? And they just watch as he fails miserably. Uh, both just having a great time just watching this fucking doofus. Oh my god. Uh, look, I look, Manny was okay. I mean, I didn't really have a problem with him. And then He's course, almost comedic relief to a point. Yeah, he is. I mean And look, Gina and it's been in the bus after the fucking after they get interrogated, they're on their way to the look, can can I even can I even call her Gina at this point? No, I should just call her Kelly from Grimm. That's what I should call her. No, she'll you always be Gina, Gina to me. Or you could no, call no. her. No, no, no. She was Gina from Scarface in Grimm, and now that I'm watching Scarface, I should call her Kelly from Grimm. She's. I'm trying to think of a way to combine the two. It's not. <laughs> Moving on. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you were gonna say something. <laughs> but no, um, no, I don't know. I mean, Gina, Gina was just. I mean, I know at like the end of the movie there was that whole weird scene where like like Gina walked into Tony's office and she was wearing her her robe and everything and she had the gun and everything and I was like, okay, where the fuck did this come from? Probably almost as coked out of her mind as he is. Maybe, but also, I mean. It's, okay, we're, we're we're moving a little far, but I mean, it's it's the fact that I he, never got that impression from Tony. I never got that impression from him that that's what he wanted from her. I mean, but it's no, not really. But but it's still, it's still bring, <clears throat> the only impression that I got from Tony in regards to Gina is that he was an overprotective brother. That's it. That's all I got from him. Oh, when when Manny goes like, "Hey, uh, how about Gina, huh?" And you get that high pitched fucking sting. He's, you stay away from her. She's not for you. All right, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's I all won't. I got. That's all I got is that it was just an overprotective brother. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I think I think the whole situation could have been avoided if Manny had just come to Tony and and just asked his permission. For Gina's hand in marriage, I but think that's that what was, he kind of. But that's what I'm saying. When he expressed interest, Tony fucking lost his mind. You see, yeah, I, 
I don't know. I still think the whole thing would have been avoided if Manny just came to him. I think that I think the whole thing could have been mm-hmm. avoided. Him, maybe I. I don't know. I think is part. I think that was partly Tony being over, definitely overprotective, but I think he also he knows what Manny's like as well. So but, I think he was just like, no, my sister's no. But but some she's it, she's it, a saint. You're tongue flicking fucking sex maniac. It's not gonna happen. So it, it's it's a lot of factors that that could that, that could be pointed to, but it's still this, but it's still this thing of. Like it's so, really extreme jealousy. It's like it's really extreme jealousy when it comes to that situation, though. So, are you saying that the marriage between Manny and Gina would have ended in divorce eventually? No, I mean, I. That's hard. To no, say. I think. I think. Yeah, I think Manny was always going to die somehow. I don't think divorce would have been like maybe if he lived long enough, but it, I don't think Manny was long for this world. Well, that sucks. But, I mean, I mean mm. yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, did you guys... I mean, uh, if, if Tony didn't survive, there's no way fucking Manny would have survived. Oh, yeah, it's just like um, Tony would have definitely ended up killing the guy in New York regardless. And uh, he would have um, pissed off the guy in Colombia. And he would have... Uh, was it Colombia, I think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sosa. Sosa. That was yeah. his name. Sosa. And he uh, would have pissed him off. Then he would have sent his army to the estate. And if Manny was there, he would have died in the siege anyway. Uh, either of you ever played the Scarface game? No. <laughs> they retcon the. Uh, skipping forward to the very end of the movie, which I'm sure no one knows. So this is a massive spoiler. Tony gets shot to death at the very end of the movie by what? Some no, kind of no. cool looking dude. With Why would you glasses. tell me that, man? Come on, that, that, that I, I didn't know that. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Great. I'm sorry. The movies ended for me. The movies ruined. I, I'll never watch it again. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Is that sarcasm? Yeah. Oh my god! Is that sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Cool guy with sunglasses and a sauna off shoots Tony in the back. But in the game, you turn around and you kill that guy. Uh-huh. Then proceed to uh, shoot your way out of the mansion and then keep living. And end up getting revenge on Sosa and shit. They actually did it pretty well. Like It was a good game. But it kind of takes away from that ending, for sure. Well, that's a because, bit. because that's a little bit more. But it was nice getting revenge. But that's a little bit more of the message that, you know, that that look, at the end of the day, Tony Montana wasn't some wasn't some evil, maniacal drug dealer. Like the story centers on Tony Montana. It centers on Scarface, you know, but it also shows how when he was immersed in this world in Miami. And seeing how other guy, I mean, this guy was turning his shit into legitimate money, and everything like that. You know, see so you, you 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 see the you see the basis of what a lot of these guys become. Like a lot of these guys are out there selling drugs. They're they're basically laundering their money. They're 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 basically getting legitimate businesses. He owned a car dealership, and he's you know, so he's got a base. He's got a baseball team that you know, saying so that he's that he's overseeing and all this type of shit like that. The other guy that he ends up working for, and. You just see that it's like a whole big thing that's going on. That you know these bankers and these lawyers, and you just, you just see how a lot of how a lot of the whole shit works. It's not just him being this drug dealer. It's this whole network that he worked himself into. That's you know what I'm saying that that's making that it's helping him to get all this money, but then quite like, easily too. Yes, quite easily with very like pretty much very little risk for the most part. Like it's it's there, but like, did you ever see uh, documentary Cocaine Cowboys? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty much a, about this whole thing, like the cocaine trade in Miami in the eighties, and they had it pretty fucking easy to a point. Like again, the risk was there, but it was a lot easier than you would think it would have been. 
just flying in and flying out these fucking planes full of cocaine, getting rid of it. I would definitely yeah. agree with that. I mean, it's, it's just... Got harder for them at a certain point. Obviously, they got caught, but yeah, try that shit now. I mean, even now, it's it's actually probably not that different now. Still a lot of drugs being sold, but it it's was easier good. back then. But it was a bit of a different network at that point, and especially with the deals that they were doing. But I mean, just to give you a little bit more, I know you said it was hard. To, it was kind of hard to follow, Charles. But the main thing is that when they got to Miami and they started to the, the work, you know, what I'm saying that their contacts from the guy that helped them, you know, what I'm saying get over from someone that was, you know, some someone that wanted that job done. But then it was like, like sort of like the under guys that they ended up meeting up with. He didn't get along with immediately. Is always that sort of thing, that sort of story, and everything like that, and. But he's like working, but like he comes and working for the main guy because because Tony's always he's always self assured, confident, you know, very, very big bravado, you know, and, and everything like that. So he's he's not someone that's afraid to speak his mind or the the, the be you know so or be willing to be noticed and be willing to step up to whatever you know. So sometimes with certain people that you know saying they they like that, and you know and, and they also they also like to play. I mean, it's always that. That little thing I, I see it in a lot of movies with people who think they have power, you know, no, no matter if it's all the way back in medieval times or if it's in the fucking, you know, it was in the yuppie, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it was in the whole yuppie generation me 80s or whatever. It's just like you still got these people that talk like they, they look at a certain person like, yeah, he'll break his back for you. Like, you know, what I'm saying it's just that that, that that whole thing. But it's like, yeah. They'll, they'll they'll be loyal. They'll bring it back. But it, but if you fuck them over, you know what I'm saying? How, how do you think? You know what I'm saying? How do you think that's gonna go? You know, if you fuck them over and they, you know what I'm saying, and they still live, how do you think that's gonna go with a person like that? With a person that's willing that's willing to put themselves out there for you to put their neck on the line for you to bring their back for you, and, and then you and then you screw them over. How do you how do you think how do you think the rage is gonna is gonna is gonna come pouring down on you at that point? As we as we saw later on, you know. Mm. And it's just you know, and it's just like, and it's like you know things because, because at this point, he's just a guy that's in there working for somebody else. You know, we don't we don't get to him being the man for a while. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's at first, him getting going through his own pains and his own and his own pathway to get there. But and the deal was fucking Frank. Yeah, and that's the thing. But eventually, he had to he had to take him down in order to in order to move up. Stole his wife by wearing a sun hat. <laughs> Take, taking a sun hat, putting on a. That's the moment right there. You can tell the moment when he won that bitch over that cranky bitch. Put on that sun hat. That's what you think, though. Huh? I reckon <laughs> that that moment. So he puts on her hat. Got the way, let him try to drive her. She was sick. <laughs> Fucking those pants were soaking. Oh my god! I think <laughs> I think it's when I think when she sensed the weakness in Frank, or you know, what I'm saying, or whatever, is where it it really started to turn. You know, I, I think when she sensed that whole thing where he was like, where he almost seemed like he didn't really want to challenge. He didn't really want to challenge him. He was sitting by him talking to her, and all of a sudden he comes up there, and it's like it's almost like he didn't even want to challenge him to like. You know, to, to get you know, what I'm saying to get up from the table or whatever, to, you know, so to get up from the booth or whatever. He wasn't trying to move, and he wasn't. It was like he was hoping that that you know, what I'm saying that El, you know, Elvira, uh, Vira or whatever would, would would just would just get up and leave with him still and everything like that. So, you know, yeah, we just you know you you start sensing that weakness, and you realize, yeah, it's you know, if I'm if I'm gonna be in this world, I know he's selling drugs and. Everything like that. If I'm being in this world, maybe I'm, I mean, maybe I ought to be with Tony. <laughs> <laughs> He's so, got the know, scar he, that you know he got from eating pussy, apparently. Oh God! According to this one guy. <laughs> but yeah, man, that movie was like I said, it's easily three hours for sure, and it definitely I think it's just me. shy. I feel like it's like two forty something. 250. 250, okay. Yeah. It definitely gives you two halves because he, he, it definitely shows him 
kind of coming up, starting to come up, and the relationship with his mother and his sister. You know, it's funny because you have two females, two different females that, that, that are related to him and they have very different, they have very different perspectives of him. You know, where I think and it's not always, I don't, I never felt like it was always, it was all naivety when it came to Gina. You know, when it came to Tony, it was just that she understands what was going on in Cuba and what some people were doing and how that made them, how that made them seem like criminals, how that made them seem like, you know, and his mother didn't approve. And of course, his mother's definitely not approving now. You know, what, what's going, you know, so what she feels like is going on, what is going on. You know, and everything oh, like that. That first reunion, Gina's, Gina's ecstatic to see him. And his mother's like, oh, you piece of shit. She doesn't say that, but it's pretty much, you know, how it goes. I mean, yeah, because, you know, she, I mean, even though they felt, even though they felt the same way about Castro, they still didn't, I guess she felt like what he was doing was still not, you know, it was still not the right thing, you know, and everything like that. But, you know, but that's always going to be the the longstanding story. There are going to be some people who, who believe in nonviolent protest and things like that. And some people believe in getting more directly involved to create change and everything like that. So just want to see what you guys thought about that and thought about the American dream. Why did the American dream for him seem like it was going to be climbing this, climbing this sort of like underworld corporate ladder of being a drug Lord? Why, why did that, why was that the thing? But was that what Miami was? Is that all he saw? Was that, I mean, what do what do you think? Why do you think that that was the the quick thing to jump right into? Um, <clears throat> Charles, do you want to go first? I like um, like the he thought the American dream was to get into the drug trade. Seemed like to me. It seemed like to me. It's, it's like he looked around. He seen what we seen what everything was and how. And what, I mean, I mean, because we're coming at a time of DeLorean and everything like that, and you, you just you just seeing a lot of different things get exposed. And Miami was probably one of the, you know, they, I mean, they even had a show, Miami Vice. I mean, it, it just kind of, because I mean, it's like because Miami was such a hotbed for crime, underworld type shit, and everything like that. It was just like they did. They, they had somebody finally had, had the guts to create some sort of show. That sort of like took a look into that, you know, into that underworld that was Miami. So, and you got somebody else that's kind of washing dishes at a restaurant or whatever, and they see how other people are living. like a like a food truck. Well, yeah, I guess you could see yeah, more like that. Yeah, I guess it was outside, wasn't it? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Maybe not a food truck, but it was definitely yeah, like one of those like small, like it might have been a food truck, but one of those very tiny. Tiny, yeah. almost a stall more than a restaurant. It, it was a stand. It, it was more like a large stand. stand. Sorry, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, but we're, we're still on the same track. But, but yeah, so it was just like you, you start seeing that, and it's like, you know, you're coming in kind of under the radar a little bit because mm -hmm. you know they weren't going to let you in at first, but somebody who has some connections kind of got you in because you were willing to because you were willing to still you know you were willing to still put in work for the cause and everything like that. So. You know, you know that it's, it's going to be hard to sort of like go in and like go in the, I guess the, the the throwback American dream, the old school American dream way of really trying to get out there and getting yourself a nice, good paying job and all that type of stuff. Because I mean, I don't know if they have paperwork and everything like that. It's more of you're kind of under the thumb of other people who know you're kind of illegal, and you know you're kind of in the country illegally and they're kind of just taking advantage and you're working there but then somebody else that's 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 promising you to give you more money a little bit more status if you're willing to go over here and do this so i think i think the way he kind of came into the situation and the miami that he was kind of living in and a part of it kind of it kind of made him feel like that the, the way to getting to a better life the way to get into that american dream was through that it seemed like that was the only way for him Yeah, like look at how he <clears throat> came into the country. He came in like as sort of like you know a guy who's just sort of like, "Hey, I'm here. I'm happy to be here." And throughout that whole like sequence before he gets sent to the camp, it's just 
pretty much just him sitting there while the guy tells him how much of a piece of shit he is because he's got a scar on his face, basically. Roll doesn't know shit about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't know shit about him, but he, like, immediately is just like, yeah, he's very, uh, he's not, a uh, he, he's not down with the Tony Montana, that guy. <laughs> Okay, I definitely, I definitely forgot about that particular part too. So that definitely says that definitely. It, says, it, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like that scene kind of could have played out like this. He's like, he walks up to him and says, "Like, what are you? Some kind of Scarface?" And then roll credits. You know, yeah, you don't want to go. Hokey <laughs> like that. Yeah, you want to go hokey like that, but but let me ask you this question. Okay. <laughs> okay, when they when they went when they went and made that drug deal. With, with those guys and and ended up being ended up being in the shower getting ready to get like slaughtered you know what I'm saying like, like like cattle or something like that like he believes he believes old boy played by I forget his name in the movie played by F. Murray Abraham um, Omar yeah okay Omar Suarez yep see now th- th- thank you David now that was coming back to me now but um like he I never he liked made, that fuck yeah, he believed it was, it was, it even kind of thought that he may have set him up with, you know, what I'm saying with him and, and his friend and everything like that. But do you think that? Do you believe that? No, I think that was that fucking that shady dick bag that actually screwed them over and had the chainsaw and everything. I think that was his thing. Just can't be sure. Like, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I've always thought it was just that guy just being. Just going, piece of just, just going off script. Just going off script. Yeah, pretty much. Hmm. I'm sure that I'm sure it's not the first or last time that happened. Hmm. Imagine that happened. Well, no, probably quite no, a lot. No, no, that was the last time. No, that was that, that was the last. Uh, time. <laughs> in that instance, yes, for that guy. Yeah, yeah that was the last time. But I mean, as far as that happening, yeah, I feel like that probably happens a lot. Okay, yeah, tr- true enough. <laughs> it's like, yeah, not yeah, it's not like, necessarily like, like that with chainsaws and stuff, but. You I'm sure it know. happens. Oh, yeah, it's true. You, you, you never know. I, I just don't know, man. Because <laughs> just, just how are you going to hear a chainsaw or a video kill the radio stuff while you're hitting on hotties? That was playing? <laughs> that was yeah. playing then? The oh. chainsaw's going. He's up in the bathroom scene. And Manny's down talking to a couple of hot chicks in the car while video killed the radio star just blasting oh, on the radio oh out there oh yeah yeah it wasn't playing it wasn't playing in the apartment that's some that's some twisted. patrick bateman shit right there yeah that's twisted oh my, oh my god no way that, I, I thought it was some some other movie that was happening on their tv i'm like okay like okay yeah we're good we're, we're on track. i think i think he i think he did turn up the tv as well actually yeah he did but still in like in places like that i can't imagine that's stopping the neighbors from hearing a chainsaw and I, I, I was always weirded out. Walls. I was always weirded out by the way that 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 his other little right hand man was named Chichi. I just I, I just didn't think that was a name for a guy, but you know what I'm saying. But but Chichi was always cool. He was he was he, he was all he was always he was always down, man. He was always on top was of it. But... Really, was Chichi? Yeah, that was his name. It's <laughs> fucking yeah. Goku's wife in Dragon Ball Z. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's the whole point. That's the whole point of what I'm making right there. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually you. You would think female, so it was like yeah. it was an aggressive was Japanese always, woman. But he was always a cool dude, you know. what I'm saying in, in the movie and shit, always the right yeah. man. He tried, and, and then and then he ended up dying because Tony wouldn't let him in the fucking door. Fucked up though, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like really fucked up. Oh, you know, but I think that I think more than anything, like. You see, it's almost like you see Tony Montana become a monster eventually because he starts he starts really consuming the drugs heavy, mm-hmm. but he still also has anger issues even before that. But it's just, but when, especially when it comes to Gina, it's just it's just weird. It's 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 at the edge of something, man. I, that, that's that's about the best way I can put it without making too many without making too many weird implications. But it's just it's sort of like the I mean like there's there's something there. Like it's, I get what Charles, it is get, is kind get, of unclear. I get, I get Charles being an overprotective brother. I get I get that viewpoint. I get that perspective. I get where he's coming from. He's just being an overprotective brother. But it's just 
a murderous jealousy. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? It just like, wow. I just, you know, it, it's just, you know, and even when he realized, like, look, and then still there was a part of him that realized at that moment that when he realized that they were married and that they were going to, and, and, and that they were going to tell him that they were married and he realized that it, it wasn't just some, some conquest for him. That he really did care about her, and that he was really. That's right. That was, that was like another. that was like the second after he killed him, right? That's when she told him everything, and that's and, and, mm -hmm. and, and look, he realized that he that he was really trying to make an honest woman out of her, and he wasn't trying to be some kind of conquest that he mm -hmm. was that she wasn't going to be some kind of conquest for Manny and everything like that, and he kind of realized that, you know, yeah, I shouldn't have did that, but but there's something, I mean, but there's something else that's unresolved. I don't think there's anything weird. But it's on the edge of something, though, because I mean, and I, and I guess because you realize the kind of guys that are out here, it, it can kind of blur the lines a little bit. I don't I don't think he has those kind of designs like you, Charles. I don't I don't think it was that, but it can kind of it can kind of feel like that because because of the extreme worry that I mean, I as a father for my daughter have extreme worry about the kind of guys that are out there. You know what I'm saying that, that are out there and what you know what I'm saying and what they may try to do and how they might try to take advantage of her and things like that. And it may border on a jealousy that might make that that might seem a little weird on my part, but it's not like I'm trying to, you know, act like my daughter is my woman, but it's just like I just want I just want the best for it. I know some of the worst that can be out there, you know, and but it's like I said, like if I was friends with a guy like Manny and he was like, Hey, how about your sister, huh? <laughs> I probably would have pretty similar reaction i wouldn't be but, surprised that at one point you were probably the type of father say like oh no you're gonna be you're gonna be locked in your room until you're 21 right <laughs> i try to look man, I, tr I try to be balanced because you know my mom had me on a short leash you know when i was coming up you know because i guess she felt some things about me so she kind of kept me kind of Kind of kept the reins on me a little bit, so I didn't get out of control. Yeah, yeah. And, and and made sure that that I didn't see I didn't see Gigolo as a positive thing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, just I'm like, wow, it's the way she, because you know, the way she said it at one point, like you you can't get gifts, you know. So I I got a gift from a girl that was my girlfriend. It wasn't like I had two or three, and I got a gift from this girl who was liking them. She was my girlfriend, my one and only girlfriend. And I got a gift from her, and that's what I heard on my mom's mouth. Gigolo. I'm like, whoa, what? What, what? what the hell? I mean, I didn't say what the hell there, but kid, you know, I'm thinking in my head like, yeah. like, why is she saying that? Gigolo. I'm fairly like, certain that if you said what the hell in front of your mother the way you talk about her, your mother would have opened up a can of whoop, whoop ass the likes you have <laughs> never seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been something close to that for sure. <laughs> What's a gigolo? Yeah. And she's like, well, some, you know, no, some men you, get paid no, by knew. women. It's like, wait, she she could I can get money from this bitch? No, no, thank no, no, thanks to my mom. <laughs> thanks to my mom and, and her trust of me. I, I saw American gigolo as a kid. I, I saw American gigolo. So I knew what a wait, gigolo wait, was. Wait, 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 wait. American Gigolo or Deuce Bigelow, male Gigolo. No, I saw Richard Gear, American Gigolo. Oh yeah, yeah, was, yeah. When I wasn't supposed, when Ow, I, when I really God. wasn't supposed to, when I when I really really wasn't supposed to, you know, what I'm saying? I was like a, I was like a kid, I was like a, a kid, and I really wasn't supposed to be seen. Yay high! <laughs> and I really was not supposed to be seen. You know, just a wee lot. So when mom called me a gigolo, trust me, I, I had a I had a working knowledge of what of, of what that was, and I'm just like, why why are you calling me that? Like why like why are you essentially calling me a male prostitute? Like what like 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 what is going on here? You know, over a over a chain, over a necklace, like jeez. But yeah, so it was just you know it, it was like maybe somewhere down the line, but not now. No, come on, it's, it's like... never going to be that, but. It's That's never like, gonna be that. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. It, it's just end up going to lunch with a chick who's got a fucking cock for a nose. The hell? <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't write it. It was in a movie. 
I don't know. It's kind of weird. She sneezes and it's terrifying. <laughs> When you look like Deuce Bigelow, I guess you, you know what I'm saying. Look, the, 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 you know what I'm saying. The, the the client pool is a little unique. Let's just say that. <laughs> Which yeah. I still have not seen the sequel to that movie. Well, that's where yeah, Cocknose comes from. Oh, the European Gigolo. Oh, yeah. 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 I've seen the first movie, but I've never seen the sequel. I've heard bad things about the sequel. Which is why I've never I, seen I, it. I enjoyed it at the time. I can't remember when that came out, but I was quite young. I, I feel like it's probably a movie I'd watch now, and I, maybe I'd still giggle. I don't know. But I feel like it probably doesn't hold up as well as yeah. would be nice. Look, the whole reason why I avoided it is because everybody said that it was so much worse than the first movie. And I was like, yeah, it's probably a wise move not to watch it. And then I just never got around to watching it. Yeah, fair enough. So, eh, whatever. Just, just a little reference to our conversation before. <laughs> Aggressive Japanese women are the best. Okay, what is the context of that? Uh, we talk about Chi Chi, Goku's wife, in Dragon Ball Z. Oh my God! Uh, She's an aggressive Japanese woman, which is a fact. She is. Uh, like he's the most powerful man on earth or in the universe, and he's still terrified of her. Because you know, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, like I said, that's, that's a whole other conversation of male and female dynamics that that we would have to get into another time, maybe another creative show, maybe the nothing show, maybe the hashtag nothing show. When you know, say when we have a little respite, when we have a little bit of a respite after this, and yeah, and do we, do I, we I mean, uh, unless he gets back to me, I don't think that'll happen today, really? Well, yeah, I'm, Jim sent me, oh, hold on, I'll save. He said he was going to be back anytime. So he sent me a message before. Um, and he said, let's reschedule for something ASAP. So, yeah, I imagine probably not. Okay. Well, I'll still hold out hope just in case. But if not, then, yeah, I'll definitely be. There's definitely some things that we can discuss. We can put a pin in and discuss at the next hashtag. Nothing show that I will definitely be a part of. I should have been a part of the first launching show but i'll definitely be a part of the second one you know my my place in history cannot be tarnished but i just wanted to be a part of the relaunch you know but life. i just realized i traveled through time 33 minutes ago daylight savings started so i i went forward an hour did i like did i become transparent ooh, for a second ooh. or something what is the future like, Damien? I don't give a shit about your time travel unless you got freaky Aunt Martha with you, Damien. So don't talk about that. I don't give a fuck about your time travel unless you got freaky Aunt Martha with you. I have an important question about the future, Damien. No. <laughs> Do they have sandwiches there? <laughs> They're shit sandwiches, but... The meat is green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only green eggs and ham. That's all we got now. It's all the proteins and nutrients a growing boy needs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yum, yum. Get uh, some. All right. So, all right. So, uh, we've covered pretty much uh, Scarface. So, you want to move on to Pulp Fiction or Saw or what? Well, well uh, um, actually, I just want to give a moment here um, because that's where I first heard. One thing I did want to cover, well, a couple of Push things. Push it to the limit. One of the greatest songs ever. Um, I'm gonna definitely say on that song and that and that scene that that whole that whole, you know, I guess what would they call it montage? Yeah, I would definitely say one of the more one of the more stark things that's burned into my brain is the last part with Michelle Pfeiffer, where she's in her bedroom and she's like, okay, she. Pops one in one nose, pops in another nose, takes a drink, takes a smoke. I think she even takes a pill or something like that. It's just like, God damn it. Oh okay, my, can, can I can I bring up something about Michelle Pfeiffer's character? Throughout the entire movie, she seems so disinterested during the entire fucking movie. Well, okay. Pretty now, much, yeah. This, but no, can you imagine it, like like would you would you be any different if you had to fuck a guy like Frank? It ebbs and flows. You know what I'm saying? Every he's, day. 
to get your head. He, you know, what I'm saying he's he's where he was, and then, like I said, and then she gets. Look, him I I did not like her character at all. I didn't. I I did not like her character. No, she I like. I like. Polluted. She can't even have a little fucking baby. I like Michelle Pfeiffer as an actress. I think she's very talented. I've liked her in pretty much everything I've seen her in, except pretty for much. This. Yeah. I did not. I, mean, like I, her I liked her in this because I thought she played that. I thought she did perfectly what the character was meant to be. I did not like her in this movie because I, I thought I, I just I thought her character was just so disinterested and it was just one dimensional, and just just I thought her character was boring. I mean, hell, the scene where she was dancing at the club with Tony, she was going like, <laughs> it's just like she was just just moving side to side. It. it was just it was the you most basic. See, Monotone dancing I have ever fucking seen. It's like, are you Charles, fucking kidding me? But Charles, you gotta understand. You gotta understand, Charles, that in that in that whole '80s era Miami, and how everybody was, they were so blown up. It, it, it was the beginning where everybody was, you know, starting to be so blown up. So, you know, yeah, yeah, so full, yeah, yeah, blown up. Uh, yeah, blown I mean, no, up. But, but so full of, <laughs> yeah, but so full of themselves. And everything like that, and it's just more. It's just more of like, she knows she's a beautiful woman, and she knows that a lot of guys would, would love to be with her. It's just it, it was more of just it, it's that, and then just kind of being, and then it's kind of being bored, you know, what I'm saying with you know, what I'm saying with her husband. Then when Tony comes along and he and he really able to win her over, you you would think that it's going to be more of that, but but of course Tony becomes so consumed with. Making money and everything like that, and buying a tiger, going, <laughs> and, keep, and keeping things going is just like, you know, she just swings back into what, and, and, into what you know, saying she does, and, and even more so, it's more money. She's swinging more, more. like to see that scene where she just like, wow, one sniff in one nostril, one sniff in another nostril. She fucking takes a drink and makes another thing, and she's like, oh my god, she picks up that cigarette. I'm just like, god damn, that shit will always, that shit will always be like. That was her last scene things. in the movie was the bad guy scene in the restaurant, right? Like she mm -hmm. leaves, and I don't think we see her again. That's correct. That's correct. Um, I just think that she was. I just think that she realized after a while that you know, it. She she was like you know it. It was like she knew what the life was, so it wasn't like she was this. She was like pissed off about what the life was. I think mm -hmm. that. She just felt like after a while with everything that was going on, with how consumed he was with the money, how distrusting, paranoid, and just, you know, abrasive he was with everybody and everything like that. There, there was more excitement and fire with her. She tried having conversations and talking to him about, you know, I wish somebody had gave you the money. Maybe you'd have been less, you know, what I'm saying, less angry or less of a prick about it, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, you know, and, you know, just trying to let him know that he's not that you have all this money you seem to have all this but you're not really enjoying it and it just gets to a point where you just you know she's like looking over her shoulder she's constantly got security she constantly has security as like her best friend and whatnot you know she's saying like we're not winners you know and see and that's when he again he raises out because now it's like the person that he cares about is looking at him like he's fucked up and then there are all these other people that he knows are corrupt in their own way that are fucked up. So it's like he lashes out at them. And that's when that speech happens. That's why that speech happens. Why that, you know what I'm saying? Say, you know, to say goodbye to the bad guy or whatever, you know, say, I'll get this bad guy's way, you know, what I'm saying? say hello. You know, it's just, you know, it's like, you're never going to see another bad guy like this because he just wanted to let them know, like he said, you know, you, you know, you're not good. You just know how to hide. You know, it's just like he he always felt that way. That that's why it, that's why it wasn't a thing for him to get into the drug trade and, and and do whatever needed to be done because he felt like that's what you know saying that's what that's what at least the city that, that he was seeing was built on. You know, and so it was just more of like this kind of imploding, imploding, and kind of like just spreading. You know, some kind of and imploding from inward and kind of spreading outward like that. Like she wanted to let him know that that all this money and 
all the places that we go, but we're still looking over our shoulder, constant security, you know, constant danger, constant paranoia. We're not winners. You know, we, we can't raise kids in this, you know, and things like that. So, and then, you know, he's like, okay, she's making, trying to make me feel like shit. And then you guys are looking at me and ho- looking at me with horror, like I'm just the worst person ever, you know, but what the fuck are you? You know, so it is kind of, it's, it's kind of, he finally gets a moment to be able to say to those people, like, you're no better than me. You you guys want to believe that, but you're no better than me. You guys can look at me and like, okay, he's a drug dealer. You know, you know, he's made his money off of possible drug dealing or whatever. But, and that, and that's the thing. To, for those people to know, to possibly know that Tony Montana is, you know what I'm saying, is wealthy and able to, and able to dine in that restaurant because of drug money, possibly because of drug money, or they're almost certain of it. What does that say about them, you know? That they just, like, what, like, they're clearly cool with it until he's having a bad moment. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a layered situation where, yeah, you're looking at Tony Montana as the lead. And and how he evolves in this life and coming to America and what he and what his experience is and his evolution ultimately his downfall. But what we also are looking at is the American system, as it were, and the international system with that reporter and everything like that. And that's another thing while we while we segue into the reporter and that whole and that whole incident. The thing of no women, no kids yet. Okay. I'm I, I can agree with most people on that. But most guys who have a code, most assassins or whatever have a code, no, no kids, but no women, no no women, no kids. Yeah, I, I just watched. I would say for anybody who can believe that, that no women and you know, no women alone, no kids. I would sit them down and have them watch Sin City, a dame to kill for. You watch that and you'll understand. Some women need to be killed. Now, this is in the context of a movie, YouTube. He's not saying. (laughs) I've never seen any of the Sin City movies. I highly recommend the first one. And I only watched the second one for the first time recently. It's, It's still pretty damn fun. But that first one is fucking brilliant. That's a Zack Snyder movie, right? Robert Rodriguez slash Frank Miller. Oh, okay. I, could, I don't know why I thought it was directed by Zack Snyder. Because it because it kind of because it, because you kind of feel like that that's the kind of thing that he would do, but you know Robert Rodriguez is a very he's a very he's surprisingly a very versatile. I don't know why I'm saying surprisingly. But he's a very versatile director. He's he, probably he's one very, of the most versatile out there, really. He's very willing to take chances on things. If he if, if he likes if he likes the material, he's very much willing to take chances. And, and, and like, at what the either of you seen Alita Battle Angel? I have. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I watched that for the first time not too long ago either, which was that directed was by Rodriguez. Rodriguez written really? uh, directed by him, uh, written by. James Cameron and I think someone else, but I really enjoyed that. I thought that was that was a lot better than I expected. It was okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what though? Um, like I would definitely watch a sequel, I'll say that. If if there it's not, ever it's is not one. Getting one. It's not? No. Damn. So I feel like they had that plans for like three of them i think but that's like i said but but that's probably about as much i think i'm just about done with scarface but i I, I think like i said it was definitely a layered experience i I definitely and i definitely i think even towards everything else that we experience i think even that this kind of shows that that like you start realizing like at, at that point even as a kid I started realizing like uh, he's got a he's got a code about him he's not he's not as ruthless as people you know what I'm saying as people would suggest that Tony Montana you know what I'm saying was when it comes to this movie because he did have that code about no women no kids 
and everything like that. And it was even willing to kill the other guy because he was going to fucking bomb the car as a result of that, you know, and like, even at that stage where it's like, cause we see the shift from the beginning to the end of the movie where he goes from this pretty happy guy, really. Like he's got like this sort of somewhat happy energy about him to just being a miserable, completely miserable fucking guy. And even at that point, it is like that's pretty much close to his lowest point. He's still just like, no, not doing that. I still got, you know, despite how I, I, you know, despite where I am in life and how I'm feeling about everything else, I'm still not going to change my uh, base values, my base code or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I mean, and it just kind of shows that. That again, it's it's not that he's a monk. I mean, it's it's this, it's this system. It's this whole system that 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 the reporter was going to expose. And I mean, we're talking about generals and other, you know, what I'm saying other countries. I mean, it's other, you know, so other officials. They answer they're in league with the U.S. government to traffic drugs. I mean, this guy was really. I mean, they, the movie really went there. And I think that's why sometimes, that's why I made that run, um, when it comes to Steven Seagal because I feel like. A lot of times when it comes to a movie that's really trying to delve into something, they want to make it, they want to make the other moments like over the top so that you don't focus on that. Like they want to try to make it all about Tony Montana and the drugs and everything like that. But there was a whole thing going, there was a whole situation going on around him and everything like that. A whole thing. You know, guys know. You know what I'm saying? Like Banks know that this guy is is law is laundering drug money. You know, I love that. Actually, I love that during the push it to the limit montage. Yeah. You know, that banker that's, you know, been cool with washing the money. And then like Tony turns up with just like this league of people with fucking briefcases, and the guy's just like, Oh god. <laughs> no, duffel <laughs> bag. The duffel, the duffel, 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 bag. Just duffel bag. Yeah, duffel bag, yes. sorry. Yeah, it it just, duffel yeah, bags. Just, just, Dozens of duffel bags of cash, and he's just like, "Oh fuck!" Like, how do I, how do I cover this shit up? This is too much. This guy's doing too well. Like, it's just you know, yeah, because I mean, and see, and that was that was the whole thing. It's like he, all he saw was all he saw was his opportunity at climbing his version of the corporate ladder. So it's like when he saw his moment, to like, oh yeah, I can, you know, we can do the deal for this and we'll, we'll, we'll take some more of the risk off of you. We'll, we'll transport it. You transport it here and we'll take it the rest of the way. He's, he, he's, he's thinking like, this is my moment to step up and really climb my version of the corporate ladder, get to my version of the American dream and set this up and make this money. That's why he was making stupid money because he was, because he was doing this whole deal, cutting out the middleman and all this type of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? The, the basically, to basically bring more control and more money to himself and everything like that, dealing directly with, you know, so more hardly anybody ever did you know and did that unless you dealt with, I guess, the Diaz brothers or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So fuck the fucking Diaz brothers. <laughs> fuck them all. You know, so it's just, you know, it's just you, you just see that, like I said, for if you want to look at it as a more Latino, you know what I'm saying, Latino struggle, a minority struggle overall, or if you want to see the American dream, you know what I'm saying, the, the real American dream for some people that, you know what I'm saying, that come up the hard way, it, it's a different, there's a bunch of different perspectives to see it. But it's more than just about this guy sort of being like this, this fucking genius that comes in and just, and becomes this drug lord. It's, it's a whole network that he was connected into. And he just knew how to work it. Once he once he got himself working to that network, he knew how to work it to his advantage, you know. And but his but he was you know but he himself wasn't corruptible in you know what I'm saying in a certain way. And that's ultimately what brought him down. You know, what I'm saying? he took on a super powerful guy that that really needed that reporter taken out bad. From from what he was even saying, even you know, even in the interview they were looking at, I mean, it was just bad pictures. All the people who was at that meeting was being shown on that damn screen, you know, in, in that damn interview. They Isn't that crazy? After, after all the shit he's like he's done and whatnot, like what takes him down ultimately is being a decent human being. That's that's what takes him down. And then also being distracted because his sister had been driven mad at that point 
you know, thinking that her, you know, so thinking that her brother has got some kind of has got some kind of sick thing for her. That's why she, you know, what I'm saying? that's why he killed. That's why he killed her fucking husband. You know, the man that she truly loved. So she's yeah, sort of like, waiting for her to pull a fucking Ophelia. Is it Ophelia? Man, would kill herself? I think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Ophelia. Sort of just keeping an eye on her, like hmm, she might jump out a window sometime soon. Really? That's what that was. Huh? That's that's what Ophelia was. Fairly sure it was Ophelia that killed herself in Hamlet. It's been a while. Tragic but death. I, I know it, it was a tra- I heard about her. A tra- a reason watching the, the game show was about her tragic death. I didn't know it was. They didn't say whether it was suicide or murder. But wow. Okay. And Fairly, I'm was, I'm going back to high school at this point when I read that. But and you say he was I watching think it, for like 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 waiting for her to commit suicide. No, I'm saying that's what Tony was sort of like. Like, yeah, she she might have hmm, better keep an eye on Gina. Oh, okay, okay. As much as a, an extremely coked up man can keep an eye on anything. Yeah, it was just you know when he's aggressively hanging up phones that have when he's already been hung up on, saying he's got to get organized. Yeah, yeah, and it's like he like so so is like like yelling at him and then he like start, he says like i'm tony montana you can't you can't hang up on me i hang up on you and he like <laughs> i he, guess I, I guess you could i guess you could say he was yelling at him i mean he, I, I don't know he was you know he, i mean he was like you little fucking monkey i told you not yeah. to fuck me you yeah. fucking monkey yeah, he, ah, he was, ah, I mean, and he's fucking slamming the phone he was yelling at him as much as he could as much as he, you know, as much as a, a, a rich, you know, say a wealthy guy like that is, is yelling at that point, but he's just like, I don't know. It, it, it was a very he wasn't thing. angry. He was just very disappointed, which is so much worse. <laughs> so much worse. That's when you know you're in trouble. If he was angry, he could probably figure that out. But he was very disappointed. Yeah. Come here, Ken. No, I mean, no, Come it's here. just. Oh. It's just it's just words at that point because you can just I mean you got to understand I mean that guy they're talking about I mean the man he's telling people I mean he's sitting there the way that the uncomfortable looking on the face when he was telling when that reporter was talking to that damn interviewer he was talking about yeah his you know what I'm saying that he's his property and his you know what I'm saying his got control all the way up to the Andes and he's just, oh my god just <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, what the hell? You know, nobody talks about me. You know what I'm saying? No one talks about me on, on, on TV. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, he needed that done. You know what I'm saying? He he needed that shit done. Like, and then you realize, like, the power, the, the, the power is about, who, again, it, it always, no matter who you're talking to, no matter who you're dealing with, the power is about who you connect yourself with. And it's like the, the further up you get, the fur, you know what I'm saying? The more you realize, the more powerful the connections that people make. When it came to Sosa, I mean, he, he pretty much had his whole his whole country on lock, and then he even had politicians that was on his payroll from you know so from the United States and everything like yeah. that. It was just like it, it. You just realize like he cannot like his power. Like you, sometimes you don't appreciate. Sometimes it's hard in a movie to you know so to really appreciate the kind of power that someone has. That's why I'm kind of glad for movies like John Wick, especially scenes. The where he sort of like pressed. Yeah, that or, that yeah, that John Wick. I once saw him kill a man with a pencil. A not that, not that. See, I'm, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the the moment where he was talking. Pencil man. <laughs> oh my god, that, that that scene is legendary. But I'm talking about the one that's legendary for me is when he's out there talking to Winston, and he was like, he was letting them know to to the effect that if I wanted you dead, you know, what I'm saying really out, you know. You would be, and all of a sudden he just presses a button, and everybody in the fucking busy park just stops and starts looking at him like that. That shit right there to me was like, whoa, okay, that's like, that's like the firm on steroids, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's like, oh, the fuck. well, yeah, because it's 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 the high <clears throat> table. But it's just like, yeah, but it's like, but but you but you don't get to you don't get to really appreciate the kind of power that is. You know, until somebody really kind of gives you a, a, a sort of like demo of that, you know, and then you can really, you can really appreciate, like, wow, okay, he's had these oh, people just walking oh, around. Shit. Oh, oh, this, oh, 
<laughs> like yeah, just to like yeah, just the just the fucking just the fucking display on that one. Just like wow, you really get to appreciate. Okay, like yeah, this is this really is some some weird shit, some some beyond level shit here. And you just realize that you start thinking like, damn, how many people do I walk past that are on some other shit that that may be living a double life that is making me think they're a fucking bum. But they can easily shoot me in the fucking head. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 how, how do I know or, this? Or give me shelter. <laughs> or shoot me in the head. I, I only look fuck that. I, I'm, I'm worried about the other thing first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shelter second. Some some bum some bum talking crazy and and shooting me. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about that. <laughs> trying to remember which one that was. It was one John Wick movie where he's, yeah he's trying to uh, elude some folks and some seemingly. Innocuous homeless guys Just cover him up with their illusion of junk. I think I think, was, I think I think that was the second two. one, was it? That was two. Yeah, that was the was second two. one. Yeah. yeah. That was that was two because that because that you know what I'm saying that intriguing that intriguing little minx that comes in <laughs> to get they get everybody's affairs in order. You know what I'm saying? She she's definitely in three. I'm sorry, I'm intrigued by her. I I, I just you know I, yeah, I understand. Uh, I don't know what it. I mean, I, not no. I know what it is. I know what it is. It's that Sinead vibe, but she's cuter than Sinead. She's definitely cuter <laughs> than Sinead, but it's that Sinead vibe too. Especially Sinead now, was, Sinead was a fucking Sinead was a fucking badass. You know what I'm saying? You you go on the Arsenio Hall show or Saturday Night Live and you rip up a and you rip up a picture of the Pope. I Who mean, are you just, talking about? Sinead O'Connor now. Rest she in peace. Always, she always intrigued me. Yes, peaceful journey. But she always intrigued me. Well, are you talking about the judiciator or whatever she's called? The, the adjudicator. The adjudicator. adjudicator. Yeah. Yes. You talking about the bald lady? Yes. She intrigues me. She intrigues you. <laughs> Very much. So. She intrigues me. Well, we now know his type. <laughs> I, 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 I vary. Gotcha, I vary, Charles. I vary, Charles. <laughs> Like, look, let me, tell you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Lucy Lou in particular, I Lucy Lou, Brenda, you know what I'm saying? Brenda Song, what they have in common, I like Americanized Asian girls. That. <laughs> so, yeah, in, the, in Kill Bill, when she runs along the table and cuts off that dude's head, it's just like, Psst. was that pretty much you at that exact moment? No. Because she, still, <laughs> because she was because she was still being Oren Ishii, and she was still, you know, she still kind of had that accent. No, I kind of like, um, you know, like, like when I was a kid, you know, what I'm saying, look, sweet life of Zach and Cody, London Tipton, like, London Tipton, Brenda Song, Brenda Song played London Tipton on the sweet life of Zach and Cody. That's kind of what I like. I was like, Brenda Song, like a, did you say? Like, you know, what I'm saying, like Asian girls with like a Valley Girl accent. You know what I'm saying? It's oh always my like God. What? Yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. For me, that Valley Girl accent is like a huge turnoff, man. It's just yeah on a yeah on a typical on a typical blonde, blue eyed white girl, but on uh, anyone, bro. man. It's just like for that, you, that. You, yes, but on an Asian girl, it's just like I don't know. It does something to me. That Valley Girl accent is so fucking annoying. It is just like it makes me want to punch something. It's just it is so <laughs> it is so obnoxious. It's like, oh my god, seriously? Uh it's like what the fuck? You, I mean, come on. see, I was a kid. Man. Okay, Brenda Song is cute as fuck. Yes. That's the homecoming warrior right there. You know what I'm saying? That was you know what I'm saying? You you know you never even watch her movies where she was with the homecoming warrior? I'm saying, I think it was a Lisa Wu, Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. You never saw those movies? No. Who the fuck is Brenda Song? Cute as fuck is who she is. She was on what? She, she, she's in a relationship with Macaulay Culkin. What the fuck? Hey, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, and I'm feeling the way about that, but you know that that that's just me. <laughs> that's what just the me. fuck? She's been in a relationship with Macaulay Culkin since 2017. What the fuck? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I feel away, but you know that that's just that's that's how life. that's life. That's life. Okay. 
Don't 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 get me don't get me started on it. That's life. I, but, yeah, ah. see, see, yeah, yeah see, that's, my that's, memory, my, my memory. Charles is vocalizing my my inner workings right now. My memory is sharp because I definitely was crushing on her. Yeah, it definitely was Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but I, my okay. brain cannot function with this information. It's just. I guess not. I understand. Trust me. I trust me. I understand better than you know. <laughs> trust me. I understand. All what right. I so what else has she been in? Imagine what imagine she, 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 she keeps she, turning awake at night. <laughs> He's yeah, trying like, to go to see God, Macaulay Culkin. Arr, arr. <laughs> okay, so she was in the Social Network. That I have seen that movie. Okay, is that the she, Facebook movie? Yeah, that's the Facebook movie. Uh, mm -hmm. She was in the video game The Quarry, which I have heard of. Um, let's see, what else was she in? Um, She's been what is the I was looking at the poster for the quarry. The, is that like one of these like uh like sort uh, of interactive movie kind of games? Yes. Um it's done like by that, um, um, it's done by a video game company called Supermassive. Um have you ever heard of this video game called Until Dawn? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's that's what I was it's, it's it's basically the same type of game. Basically. They're the same people who made Heavy Rain too? No. Uh, Heavy Rain no, was the, it's the same type of game. Yeah, but same it's type. The, yeah, it's not, but it's not the up. same company. Uh, okay. Heavy Ra Heavy Rain was done by Quantic Dream. Ah, yeah. I always wanted to finish that. I only played some of it, but it was like very cool the way they did it. Yeah, but um, the Quarry was developed by Supermassive Games and was published by Two K Games. Okay. So yeah, I played Until Dawn. Uh, Until Dawn was exclusive to the PlayStation, and uh, was that the yeah. one with that was the one with what's the name Hayden Panettiere? Yeah, Hayden Panettiere. I yeah. believe she was in it. Yes. Now, I've wanted to check that out for a while. Uh it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I just like I just like the concept, really. Yeah, it wasn't a bad game. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. But um, I only ever played it once. And when I played it, I got pretty much everybody killed in the game. So <laughs> you would assume the worst ending. Well, I got everybody killed except for two people. <laughs> yeah. Only two of okay, the people. Okay, so there may be a worse ending then. Yeah, only two of the people survived. Only two. Okay. So, yeah. But uh, I'm not going to reveal like what I did to get everybody killed, because that would be spoilers, and I think you need to... Uh... I didn't kill everybody. I only killed everybody except for two. <laughs> you fool, Charles. <laughs> oh man. But look, I was just I was just making the best decisions that I thought were the best decisions at the time. Turned out they were the worst decisions at the time. Okay, so what we've learned today is if you get into some kind of survival scenario with Charles Whedon, do the opposite of what he thinks is the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> because maybe you'll be one of the two to survive, but best not chance it. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> it might be him, and he's the fucker who made all the bad decisions. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah it's just like yeah yeah I, I got everybody killed yeah in, uh, in horrible ways like for example one kid got their head ripped off by a monster <laughs> because I went to investigate a weird noise <laughs> of 
course you did, like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> because I was like, ooh, what's this noise over here? Maybe it's another survivor. Open the door. Nope, it's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> And the kids started screaming. You fool, child. Ah, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, I'm not going to put up the second last comment because, god damn it, V. You can read that for yourself. But was that campy horror sex? All right, I'm not, don't put up the, the previous comment, but I'm just going to respond yeah, no. to the previous comment. None of that shit happens, dude. No. Okay, good. <laughs> because. Good God, V. What the <laughs> hell? But was there can't be horror sex? We could, I think we can say that pretty safely. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. There was build up to something like that, but nothing actually happens because uh, the woman in the scenario gets taken by one of the monsters and the man in the scenario sees the woman get taken. So he grabs a shotgun and runs off into the woods to go find her. And uh, the woman that gets taken by the monster, surprisingly is one of the people that survives in my playthrough. Okay. Yeah. So she survives. Yeah. Yes. Tom. Yes. (laughs) I'll, I'll go over it again. We've learned if you get into a survival horror situation with Charles, don't listen to what his the like, don't listen to him. His ideas are terrible and you will probably die. Hmm. He thinks weird noises should be investigated. He's a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> but thought he was more than that, but no problem. I, I would have thought so no. too, but apparently not. So when we think about survival horror, so I guess we're I guess we're getting closer and closer to Saw as it were, huh? <coughs> Definitely getting closer. Um oh, I, I think we're pretty much so Look, probably I'm, dumb I'm, never go, I'm never going to play the game again, so it doesn't matter. So you're satisfied with leading a bunch of people to their horrible demises. <laughs> Look, when I got, when I, uh, yeah, no, we're discussing Pulp Fiction next, but uh, when we got, uh, when we got, not we when we, been? Okay. no, 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 when I got everybody killed, it was in a spectacular fashion that I just couldn't help but laugh my ass off when it happened. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm satisfied. <laughs> I, I accept that answer. I understand and accept that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just flipped a switch and then I blew up the house and everybody burned alive. <laughs> and you're like, was that me? Oh no, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, dickheads. On to the next game. <laughs> I am the fool, Charles Whedon. <laughs> Look, all right, to everyone out there listening, I am talking about a video game called Until Dawn. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about something that actually happened. I'm talking about a video game. No, that time only half the people died. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I actually like I I saw this this popped up on I again I swear f- fucking phones are listening. I I saw this pop up randomly on YouTube yesterday and I forgot there was actually a saw game on I think it was PS3. Uh uh maybe Never played it so I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, like, it's there, are, there, are, there are actually two saw games. There's two. Oh There's yeah, two, he yeah. he did say plural. But yeah, I think the one I saw was for the first one. Yeah, there are yeah, two like, Saw games. Did you ever play either of them? No, I never played either one, but uh, the Saw games focus on Danny Glover's character. Okay, so some kind of like detective like deal. Uh, no, he actually gets captured by Jigsaw, and he has to escape the traps. So is it like... I'm trying to think of 
close comparison. At least I think that's that's what happens. Is it like Mount? Is it like Mario Party meets Saw? No, no, no. <laughs> a b- um, bunch of I'm trying to remember horrific trying mini to games. Remember, I'm trying to remember what happens, but um, let's see. Um, yeah, I didn't see. actually watch the video. I just like oh, yeah, I'll put that in my watch later and didn't get to it. Um. Yeah, the the first Saw game focuses on um. Yeah, the first Saw game. Let's see. Focuses on Danny Glover's character. The second Saw game. I don't know. Uh, the second Saw video game. Let's see. Saw the second game. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh. I vaguely recall it coming out and being intrigued, but I didn't really, yeah, never really did any research into it. And obviously, never bought it or played it. But mm-hmm. like, there's potential there, if, depending on what you do with it, that it could be a great game. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's um. Oh wait, wrong one. Just about surviving uh-huh. trap infested buildings. Okay, so it's like survival horror. Except sort of, uh, I guess, with a, yeah, I was about to say with a bit more limited scope, but like the game Outlast was just going through an asylum, so there's combat in it, you have to fight people. Let's see. Okay. The second Saw game was called Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. That's what it was called. Uh, Saw 2, Flesh and Blood. Uh, What's Stone holding up? What is that? That's a very cleverly designed drink container for the upcoming Halloween. Just, um, I don't know get together open invitation open house i don't know what i call it you know i don't call it a party because i'm not inviting set people to come it's just you know i'll tell you about it if you happen want to come around and do what we're doing fine if you're trick-or-treating and you're and you're kind of not liking the way the night's going and you just want to actually hang out and have a good time have some candy have some you know have some snacks watch some you know traumatizing movies be our guest. <laughs> Mwah, ha, 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 ha. Be our I'll guest. Watch. Come on in and fill your energy up. Damn it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's all good. Put it up again. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, fill your like energy that, up. Yeah. Ah. The Saw Blood Drive. What is that? Huh? I'm, I'm talking about what V posted in the chat. Hold on. Uh, we'll go with this one first. Imagine it gets kind of repetitive, but I still want to play it. Yeah, but that's kind of what I was thinking. It could get repetitive, but I'm sad they didn't do the Soul Blood Drive. Explain, though. What do you mean? The Saw Blood Drive. Is that is that supposed to be a movie, or is that a video game, or is that some kind of uh, like community event? What is the Saw Blood Drive? Was like people who are undecided about giving blood get thrown into traps, and you know they, they give blood whether they want to or not. What's the deal there? Hurry up and explain yourself, V. Yes, yes. You're wasting air time. Yes. Uh, don't make me do the dead air dance again. Please do. It's an old thing huh? they did during the original movies where they just hosted a blood drive through the through blood blood drive through to give blood to those in need. Oh Okay. Well that's that's pretty okay. cool. Okay, yeah, that is kind of nice that they did that. It's a way of uh, involving the community and also uh being charitable and being helpful for the community. That is actually kinda nice to be honest. Yeah. Huh. I yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a way of jigsaw. Oh, please do the. Yeah, oh, please do. 
Oh my God. Uh, I'm just gonna... uh, Damien, just, just, just put the focus on me. Dead air, 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 dead air. Okay, all right, enough. It's starting to hurt my back. Nope, 10 more minutes. No, God, no, I'm not doing it for 10 minutes. <laughs> well, you made V happy. Yes, I made V happy, and that's what counts. Two different emojis. He's ecstatic. <laughs> yes, yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Pulp Fiction. Yes, yes, Pulp Fiction, which, of course, like I had mentioned before, Yes, yes, we love you too, V. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Pulp Fiction, which I had mentioned before, that I was able to follow the movie with all the jump arounds and all the moments being out of place and everything. I was able to follow it, no problem. And this is my first time viewing the movie ever. Like, I had never seen this movie before. I loved it. I thought Pulp Fiction was amazing. I mean, this like I'm already a fan of Quentin Tarantino. I like I I like Quentin Tarantino quite a bit. I've seen some of his other work already. I've seen both Kill Bill movies. I've yeah. seen Quentin uh, not Quentin Tarantino because I mean, look, I yes, I've seen Quentin Tarantino. Ha! But no, <laughs> he's kind of goofy looking. Yes, he is. <laughs> but he's a genius. Yes, he is. <laughs> no, I've seen both Kill Bill movies. I've seen Inglorious Bastards, and I've seen uh, Django Unchained. Okay. Django Unchained is an amazing movie. I I, mm-hmm. I, I love that movie. That movie is freaking awesome. Christoph Waltz is fucking awesome. Uh, but I the, rewatched that probably month, eh, probably about two months ago now. And yeah. my God, that that's just so fucking yeah, but, good. The movie that actually introduced me to Christoph Waltz as an actor is not Django Unchained. It's Inglorious Bastards. That yeah. was the fir- that's the first movie that I saw that ever that I've ever seen that had Christoph Waltz in it, and I fucking loved him in in that movie. One of like, the greatest performances ever. Yeah, I Christoph Waltz was awesome in Inglorious Bastards. I fucking love that movie. And one of my favorite scenes in that movie actually has Christoph Waltz in the movie, where it's at the end of the movie where he says, like, uh, what is it that you say? It's like, uh, it's like we just say, bing, uh, like, like, that's a bingo. It's like, oh, we yeah. just say, we just say bingo. It's like, ah, bingo. And I'm like, what the Wait. fuck, dude? Was that near the end? I was thinking that was near the start. No, no, no. That's near the end. That's near the end. Oh, shit. But yeah, yeah. that's a bingo. <laughs> yeah, that's a bingo. And so he's just this gleeful look on his fucking evil yeah. <laughs> fucking yeah, Nazi but, face. Uh, but no, what's... Uh, yeah, the, then, of course, the Kill Bill movies, which I freaking love. And, of course, it also has Uma Thurman in it, which... Oh, boy, man. It's just like... Uh, like, ignoring her weird toe... In that movie, <laughs> it's fucking zigzag toes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ignoring her weird toe, I still think Umar Thurman is fucking hot. Like, just like Jesus fucking Christ. Even now, she's still hot, and just like, good God. But I mean, like, what do you mean, think? Like, it, thoughts about her as Mia Wallace in Pulp Fiction? Oh, I fucking loved her in the movie. Yeah, like. The, just, that wig suited her quite well. It did. It really did. I fucking loved her in the movie. Unlike and, when they tried to pull a similar thing in uh, in Grimm with uh, Juliet with similar type wigs, and I still think she just looked stupid as fuck. She did. It's like it's like um, like uh, so. Uh, where did you get that wig, Juliet? Uh, like uh, Spirit Halloween, Halloween. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what What are you doing right now? Yeah. It's just like. Uh, so what what that wig cost you? Like about five ninety nine, like six ninety nine. Oh, you got like six for <laughs> fucking five dollars. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. But no, no, the the wig uh, for Mia Wallace actually worked really well, and also it's like she she really laid it in with the cocaine. It's like good fucking. <laughs> yeah, she uh. 
she was having a good time until she really wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's like she used uh, Eric Stoltz special blend, and she, uh, you know, this was her. <laughs> She's fucking dying, man! Get this dead bitch out of my apartment. <laughs> this was her one minute. This was her the next minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fox Force Five, huh? Yeah, that's, that's, that's oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> It's like, first off, that whole story she was telling about her being an actress and being on Fox Force 5, I was like, bitch, I don't care. It's like, <laughs> I, really, I, I really don't care. Oh, you have a funny joke to tell? I'm sure it's hilarious. I don't care. It's like, I really... And ne- neither does he, but he really wants to fuck you, even though he knows he can't. Yeah. Oh <laughs> the, the only reason he's listening. Yeah, it's just like, oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, and like, just like, um, look, I like what is a country I have never heard of. I sure hope they speak English there, but it sounds like it's a country I might want to visit. <laughs> they speak English in what? Good. What English motherfucker do you speak it? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh my God. It's, I mean, it's like, uh, like what does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? <laughs> Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. <laughs> Does he look like a bitch? It's like, no. <laughs> then why are you trying to fuck him like one? Because <laughs> Marcel as well as ain't no bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we find out what happens in the pawn shop. <laughs> yeah. Well. Wait, I'm not saying he is a bitch, but well, he, 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 he ends up getting treated like one until yeah. he, until he gets a shotgun in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck? Which also, it's just like one of my favorite scenes in this entire fucking movie is the Christopher Walken scene. It's it's like it's been a while since I've seen it, but I swear that scene was like nearly ten minutes long, just him talking to the camera. Yeah, yeah, and it's just as soon as he as soon as he was talking about how the kid's father was in the POW camp and he had the watch and he had to hide it somewhere. As as soon as he said he had to hide it, I was like, wait a minute, he's got to hide. He's gonna shove that watch up his ass, isn't he? And it was like, yep, that's where he put it. And I'm like, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. It's like <laughs> Your father fucking... had this uncomfortable hunk of metal up his ass for eight years. <laughs> I, I can never remember exactly how long it was, it's, but it was it's years, five, right? It's, it's five years plus two. Oh, five it's, years. <laughs> it's five years for the father, and then it, then Christopher Walken takes the watch and shoves it up his ass for two more years. <laughs> And now I'm giving it to you. This important piece. <laughs> Your father's watch. <laughs> it's been up two asks now. <laughs> I wiped it off. <laughs> so I hope he wiped it off. Damn. It's like I don't care how many times he wash it washes that with disinfectant and bleach. I don't want that fucking ash watch. It's like, I don't. You know what? Can you just like give it to me in like a a paper bag or a box? What you know, whatever. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and sell this. You know, you know to just, someone who doesn't know the history of this. Just toss it in a fire or something. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I don't want it. It's just like that thing's been up not one but two ashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Second being this maniac who decided it was a good idea to tell me the history of this watch. <laughs> like, just give it to me. Don't, I don't need, like, I, just tell me my father held on to this. Don't, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought you wanted now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Jesus Christ. Uh. Hey, what, what did we do, V? I saw this, I was going to bring this up before. What did we do? Was it Uma Thurman's zigzag toes? What's going on? Uh, I don't remember. I really don't remember what he's calling us bastards for. I mean, there's many reasons, but why specifically? Well, yeah, there's, plenty of, there's plenty of reasons to call us yeah. bastards, but he needs to be more specific. <laughs> and I'm sure you're right, but please let us know. I mean, look, look <laughs> really, real quick, while, while we're waiting on that, I want, I'm wondering, um, like for you guys, your perspective, um, what was, oh God, what, what was Mrs. Wallace's deal? She's hyped up on cocaine for like That's most it. of the movie. That, 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 explain, that explains all. Actually, that. no, it was, it was heroin, wasn't it? Oh, Something we, like that. You, but, but that. I think it was heroin, you, actually, now that I think about it. I mean, yeah, not, not the OD, so she snorted not, heroin. I'm, I, again, it's been a while, but I'm fairly sure it was heroin, actually. I didn't even know you could snort heroin. Hey, you could do whatever you want with it. I thought you had to inject it. No. Well, mm. I'm gonna have to write that down. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm kidding. No need to buy a spoon and a lighter. Can just snort it. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but um, what I'm saying is, anyways, what, what, what I'm saying is, it just seemed like. Like, what was she trying to play into when it came to Vincent? You know what I'm saying, and and him taking her, and him taking her out. Like, I always wondered about that. Like, 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 what was? I mean, I understand that. Okay, he couldn't take. You know what I'm saying? I understand that that Marcellus couldn't take her out or whatever. Mm. And he was kind of having, you know, what I'm saying Vincent do that. But I'm just trying to figure out what she was really playing into more than anything. Was it just her? Was it just her just being irreverent in her personality, or was it just her being just kind of overall weird about about him, about one of his goons taking her out and her playing into the whole, you know, what I'm saying fear and intimidation of it? I, I just, I'm just figuring out what what that deal was. I've never been quite sure either. Like it, it almost seemed it, it definitely kind of seemed like she was somewhat interested in the guy on at least some level, but. Then yeah, it could also all be chalked up to her just having fun with the help. Like yeah. it's yeah, and it's, the I don't think it's ever it. really particularly clear as to her intentions. Yeah, because because then the OD happens, and then when he saves her, when he does everything he can to fucking save her, I I think it kind of changes. I think it kind of changes her. I think her overall feelings about him. I I, I think because I, I felt like. Was this whole thing like like sort of like a game, the the, the, the sort of the sort of me, the sort of mess with him, the press him, the, the, you know what I'm saying, or whatever it was some for some reason, you know. And I think that when she had that OD and he saved her, I think it really kind of changed her disposition overall and her and her overall feelings, you know what I'm saying, about Vincent after that point. I think it was just a different feeling. I think it, I think it was just of course it was going to be a different bond that they were going to have because of that. You know that they got that they kind of had that moment and got through that. And only they really kind of know about that. That you know, what I'm saying that are really concerned about that situation. So, but yeah, it just you know, it was just weird at first. Like it, it was just that's why I think that's that's why I think it happened like that and the OD happened because I think it was meant to kind of bring a little bit of realism to this. Because I think she was just so playing into being Mrs. Wallace and this whole thing. And in and, and this whole just kind of drawn out situation, and when the OD you know, mm-hmm. happened, I think it kind of just stripped all of that down, and it became just like a real situation. Like, okay, look, we're just gonna, you know, say, look, now we're gonna kind of see each other differently in this point. You know, you're not gonna kind of see me as just the help, and it's more than you know, what I'm saying, like, okay, because and that's and that's like I think at one point when they saw each other again, it was more of a. It was more of a welcome sort of like sort of like I wink sort of thing because they because they knew what their previous history was and everything like yeah. that and so on and so forth. So yeah, it was just like 
I always, like I said, but at first I always kind of wondered about that. Like, like what the fuck was her deal? Of, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck was her deal initially? Like, why was she, you know? You think of that like, like that sort of, let's just, let, let's assume it was some kind of clarity when she had that adrenaline kick in. She's staring up at a, at a Vincent Vega's face. Do you think she was just like, oh shit, he's wearing a wig too? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're the same. Because <laughs> you, because you're throwing me right. Because, because it won't supposed to be a wig. It's a, it's a wig because we know it's a wig. It's not John Travolta's hair. But yeah, <laughs> it's like a wig playing. for like. It was not clearly wearing, not her hair either, though. But no, but I'm saying Vincent Vega is not wearing a wig, though. Like it's a Vegas the, nut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just saying for the purposes of the movie, he's not. That's not really a wig. <laughs> thank thank you, literal stone. Just, you fuck. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll keep my jokes to myself from now on. I'm oh, sorry. Sometimes <laughs> I get. Sometimes I smoke, and I want to make sure I'm not. I'm not thinking the wrong way on something, Damien. I'm not fucking with your joke. I'm just trying to make sure. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not thinking the wrong way. On I understand that. John Travolta's ball, but you realize Vincent Vega's not red. No, I'm fucking asking. son of a bitch. Well, how, I was it's kind of like look. It it's kind of <laughs> hard for me to look past John Travolta like wearing like wearing a wig. Ever since I saw the beginning of that movie that he did where he was obviously wearing a wig and he was also playing someone who was mentally challenged and he walked into a battlefield like, earth no no, no. <laughs> well, that that too yeah that too no this is a recent movie he did where he was playing someone mentally the fan. Challenged. it was called the fan i think the oh, fan okay. where he walked into a store yeah. and the very first line of the movie is where he says sorry can't talk got a poo that's the- Which is like, is that not one of the greatest intro lines ever? Yeah, that is the very first line <laughs> of the entire fucking movie. And it's also <laughs> coming out of John Travolta's mouth. And I'm like, and asshole, I guess. And I'm sorry, what? <laughs> this is how you utilize John Travolta. Okay. Yeah, I mean, can you think of a better way? It, it keeps it, it keeps sounding to me like you keeps you got you keep describing Battlefield Earth, but I'm, I I understand. You know, what I'm, I'm just I'm not I'm just describing saying, Battlefield just, Earth, I'm man. Just saying, I'm just Battlefield <laughs> Earth. Oh my god! When I when I, when I hear that's the way you drop the ball. <laughs> that, I, I hear I hear Battlefield Earth. You know, so I just, that's what I'm saying. The like, only the thing, the the only ball thing ball? I okay. can really remember from that yeah, god awful movie is the scene where they're in the flight simulator and they keep saying the word "piece of cake, piece of cake." That's the only thing I really fucking remember. I'm, I'm going to have to look through my clips if I've still got it from, because I watched the Riff Tracks version of that movie like last year or so. And oh my, like, I've got some amazing, awful line deliveries from John Travolta. Some of the worst line deliveries you've ever heard. Yeah, but the only reason ever. why he did that movie is because it's a movie that's based off of an L. Ron Hubbard book. And, of course, L. Ron Hubbard being the founder of Scientology. And guess what? John Travolta is a Scientologist. And that was meant to be at least a trilogy. Oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> but it bombed harder than any, pretty much anything has ever bombed. And the worst part For good of reason. Is that- the worst part of it is that I saw it when I was in high school, and I actually liked the movie when I was in high oh. school. Ugh. Yeah. I did. Uh. I, I was a stupid kid at the time, and I didn't know <laughs> Clearly. <anything>. Yeah. <laughs> I was a dork. I was a dumbass. Oh, my God. I was oh. a doink. If that's even a word. If this wasn't live, I'd, I'd ask if you wanted me to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I, I'm not ashamed of it now, because at least now I'm willing to admit that, because now I you fucking agree? hate the movie. I think you, you should still be a little bit ashamed. 
I am past it, man. It's just look. I mean, I hate the movie now. I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, yeah, I know. But when I was when I was just a wee little lad, just I, a wee lad. Yeah, with the if I could if I could attempt a Scottish accent, I would say it that way. But uh, no, it's just like when I was a wee lad. Um, see, there it is. Um, I would. He was um, wearing haggis covered glasses. Yeah, yeah. When I was a wee lad, uh, I. Uh, I'm just say colored. I said covered. Fuck me. <laughs> when I was when I was just a boy, I uh, I did actually enjoy the movie. I was like, yeah, this movie's not bad. Because I'll thought, be honest, like if I had watched it at a younger age, I probably would have enjoyed it too. But the but thing I is, watched is that it at the time, the I didn't. Now, it's like, at the time, I didn't even know what a Scientologist was. I didn't even know that what they were. I didn't know they existed. I didn't find out about Scientology until after I was already an adult. Somebody yeah, I told much, me. Somebody I think told Tom me Cruise jumping. Actually, no, South Park. I credit I, South Park. It wasn't South Park that told me about them. I, by the time South Park was making fun of them, I had already known about them, but I only know very little. Um, I found out about Scientology from somebody that I knew through MySpace because uh, she was telling me that she wanted to convert to Scientology. And I did not know what that was, so I did some research. And that's when I found out. <laughs> Blocked. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that I, I, I did research by looking up YouTube videos. And that's when I saw all the criticisms of Scientology. And I was like, oh, so she's basically going to end up becoming like a fucking crazy person. Okay. Like, all right. So uh, I'm just yeah. going to talk to you a bit less. I'm, I'm going to wean off you now. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much stopped talking to her at that point. Yeah, because I still think it, it's got to be something. Like, I know a lot of actors are dumb as fuck, but I still think, and allegedly, because they have a lot of lawyers, allegedly, I think, allegedly, hmm. that it's got to be some kind of money laundering thing or something. Well, the thing it's is, is be- the the thing is is that uh, with that person that I was talking to, I was like, um, I was like, okay, you want to join Scientology? Okay, well, have fun being bankrupt. So yeah, I just yeah, I don't like. To me, I I think all religion is stupid, but mm. that, maybe just because it's newer, I don't know. Again, oh, it's it's all stupid, but it, it's just I, something about Scientology. I, I'm sure. I, I watched I watched a docu a documentary series on Netflix about Leia Remini, who is a renowned person. Oh yeah, um, who, who left? It, who left? Going clear? Was that the HBO thing? No, no, she. Uh, it was on Netflix, but uh, she talked about her time in Scientology, and she interviewed mm. people who had also left Scientology and all that. I watched it and. Yeah, with the stuff that I had learned through that docu series, Scientology is one hundred percent a cult. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. I've, I would like to still watch that because I remember that coming out, and I would like to actually see that. But yeah, it's just like yeah. At least the Catholic Church isn't demanding money. They yeah. suggest you give money. So if you want to give money, that's yeah, it's up to you. Scientology literally demands it. Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah, you can't progress. Progress, I guess is the right word. You can't get fully involved without spending some cash. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's just like I like how we were talking about Pulp Fiction, then we started talking about John Travolta, then we started talking about Scientology, and now here we are. Yeah. <laughs> It's fun <laughs> how conversations devolve. <laughs> That's why we're called Tee TV. Tee <laughs> Tee <Tee-hee>. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. So, do we have anything else to talk about in regards to Pulp Fiction? Probably a lot, really. But oh, yeah, uh, what do we want to talk about? Well, just, um, I, I, I don't want to go into. I don't want. My head's just my head's just churning with quotes. But as far as actual like 
constructive discussion. I'm sure there's still a lot, but uh, I don't know. You go. Like, well, um, there's the scene in the in. I'm not going to go into into uh, into detail like any deal. I'm just going to make like uh, just in passing like observation of the. Does it involve the word storage? No, I, I'm not. Gonna okay. bring that, I'm not going to bring that up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. like like this the, like the scene with uh, with Quentin Tarantino. It's like we all know that scene. It's just like uh, like the certain sign on the front of someone's house. Did you see the sign? It said <laughs> storage. Uh, uh, storage? No, no, no one saw the sign on uh, storage because storing uh, is not their. Uh. Not my fucking business. Yeah. <laughs> but I, during that scene, I like sorry to cut you off, but during that scene when he's just like, "You guys look like a couple of dogs." Samuel Jackson's like, "They're your clothes, motherfucker." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then of course we have Harvey Keitel show up, which um, it's always nice. To, it's always nice to see him and pretty much anything he does because he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But uh, one of those yeah. people who just pretty much just elevates anything he's in. Yeah, yeah, and then of course uh, Vincent Vega is like, uh, it wouldn't hurt to say please, and then the wolf just stands there, goes like, really, pretty please with sugar on top. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, dude, this is someone that you don't ask to say please. He's telling you to do a job so that you don't get in trouble. So shut the fuck up and do the goddamn job. You shot Marvin in his fucking face. Yeah, I get it was an accident. But this guy's helping you. Which also, not go to shooting prison. Marvin in the face, that whole scene was just awesome. Cause he just, it's one of the, it, the comedic timing on that scene is fucking incredible. He's like, oh, I don't got an opinion on nothing. It's like, oh, really? Like, bam, and then. Boom. Well, you you gotta have an opinion. <laughs> bam, <laughs> brains all over the back seat. It's like, what the fuck do you do, man? I killed Marvin. Why the fuck do you do that? I don't know. It was an accident. Just very <laughs> casual. Just I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. I will say <laughs> this: Harvey Keitel does, you know, very true. All, all of what you said about him, all the hyperboles are true. But but and, and then it's like. But then it's like he can still do something like be cool. Where he refers to never seen be cool. Really all time refer, he refers to a girl as a G string diva. He's like, somebody should give me wood. He's like, give me wood. She's giving me oak. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Like Was Be Cool the first or the second one? Be cool second. and get shorty. Was the second one? Yeah. Yeah, never seen either, but always really wanted to. Heard that's nothing where, but great things. That's where he ventures to go into the music business. Hmm. It's pretty funny. It's got it's it's got um it's got a Cedric the Entertainer in his prime, Andre three thousand in there playing, you know, say playing his nephew and a fucking aspiring rapper. Um Steven Tyler makes an appearance in there. We've got fucking um God, what the fuck is this? Steven Tyler. Ah, oh, Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> the trans uh, with the big mouth. And we've got fucking we got fucking Vince Vaughn who's playing this fucking oh my god. And then there's the rock. And then there's the fucking rock playing his gay bodyguard. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> man it's just it's a lot going on Uma Thurman's in there fucking James Woods makes a, makes a short appearance in you know in this one he's in the one before Danny DeVito's in this a little bit you know it's just isn't Travolta in one of them too he's in both he, the, the whole he's thing in both the whole thing centers around him okay Chili Palmer the whole thing centers around him being Chili Palmer and being this sort of like and being a sort of like Shylock this inside guy who you know what I'm saying who was basically going to basically I guess collect on some guys in the in the movie industry and this, you know what I'm saying that that's what Get Shorty was about and then Get Shorty was like this whole thing the movie gets made about his life as a Shylock and everything like that and it goes big you know what I'm saying everybody's and then he, like he becomes a big thing on that so then we have Be Cool where he's now venturing to 
you know what I'm saying, get in the music business and everything like that. So, so I whole... bought, I think it was, I think it was Be Cool I bought on DVD years ago. Then I found out like it was part of like a, you know, series. So I was like, oh, fuck that. I'll get the other one. And then just never did because that's what I, that's what I do. Are you yeah, talking about really... the movie Be Cool? Yeah. Yeah. That's a part of a series? Yeah, Be Cool right. and Get Shorty. And was there a third one? No, not my knowledge. Well, actually, wait, no. It was a series, maybe. Not sure. I feel like there's something extra related to those two, but... Yeah, those were definitely fun. Uh-huh. Rock, was, Rock definitely made a name for himself on that one, because, you know, it was just... He was a scene stealer. He was a fucking scene stealer, man. It was about the best you can put it. But um, but Harvey Keitel definitely is someone who is definitely he's definitely fun. He, he's 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 definitely he's, he's definitely a fun guy. The role okay, that he so, chooses to take, you just never know. <laughs> so be cool and get shorty are in the same movie series. Yeah. The centers around Travolta's Chili Palmer character. Really? Oh, holy shit. It's based on uh, a fucking 1999 novel by Elmore Leonard. Hmm. Who we know from... Justified, yeah. Well, I'm just That's right. Of course I know. Of course I know. Of course I know I that name. Fun fact. See, it gets infectious, folks. Fun facts get infectious. That's why I love fun facts. <laughs> I love them. I, I, I just keep them. I just keep them stored in my little in, 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 in my, my little file in my in, 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 in my brain computer. I just keep it fine. I just keep fun facts. Just store it right on in there. Okay, wait okay. a minute. All right, I have seen Be Cool, but I have never seen Get Shorty. So I'm gonna have to watch Get Shorty at some point. It's like, like I said, it's see that that's the thing about see you're gonna you're gonna like it if you like Be Cool. You're gonna like you're gonna like Get Shorty because it's basically that's what brought that is what brought be cool on because because get shorty was like like i said it was like him him basically still working as a shot like him still working for him still working for the mob or whatever and and kind of like stumbling into is it was sort of like in a way it was sort of like barry before barry in a way that's kind of like what, what get yeah, shorty was. get shorty was sort of like that's right there is a uh, sorry well go ahead please uh, yeah, there is a Get Shorty TV series on uh, Epix, which I guess is MGM Plus now. Okay. <clears throat> Three seasons of it, 27 episodes. Uh, not officially canceled, but nothing has been uh, announced. So who knows? But Chris O'Dowd, have you ever seen the IT crowd? A little bit. British uh, comedy no, series? Never have. Yeah. But, but, but more, uh, but more so than anything. He's more notably the guy from Bridesmaids, right? Uh, I haven't seen it. But I, do, I do believe he was in that, yeah. And Ray Romano, and then he was okay. He was, names, he, was really in, sure he was in the Cloverfield Paradox, right? I think he was. Yeah. Hold on, give me two seconds, because yeah, I know him from the IT crowd. I fucking love that show. Yeah, Bridesmaids. Yeah, Cloverfield Paradox. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm tracking on that guy. I think he was also, if, if my memory serves me correctly, I don't. He was he was in a movie that was sort of like the what was it? What was that joint? Um, he was in sort of like a, a unique sort of like sci-fi adventure type movie, but it was like what was it called? Because I, I know I own that movie, but I just can't see it right now. It's Are we one, talking like recent years or? Recent, yeah, because it was one. It was sort of like that one with the movie, um, the winter movie with the, you know, saying with the with the spirit animals and the, you know, saying the little girl and shit like that. The uh, the Golden Compass. He was in a movie sort of like that too. 
If my if um, correctly. One second. Wait, um, are you talking about uh, in regards to the Golden Compass? Are you talking about the movie The Golden Compass or the TV show that it's based off of called His Dark Materials? The movie. I, I felt like he was in a. I think he was in a movie sort of like that. Sort of like I don't think he was in the Golden Compass itself, but I think he was in a movie that's sort of like that. But I just cannot place what that movie is. I think, but unless I'm wrong, I think I'm, I could be wrong. I feel like I'm feeling like I'm wrong. Okay. Um, spirit animals. No, I'm looking up a movie. Like I thought it might have been this movie called The Starling. Which is a fantasy comedy drama, but just reading through the plot doesn't seem like it really has any of that, and it sounds kind of depressing. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, Chris O'Dowd, Timothy Oliphant, it was other, Kevin Klein, Debbie Diggs, and then a bunch of other names I don't know. Miss Peregrine's, you know, saying school for peculiar children. That oh, was definitely I, I know okay, that. yeah, he, yeah, he was definitely in that. Yeah, I know that movie. That movie. Oh, that, movie, movie. that movie stars Ava Green. Ava Green, Chris O'Dowd, Terrence Stamp, Samuel L. Jackson, Judy Dench. Either I completely missed this movie, or I'd be, I'm surprised because there's a bunch of Tim Burton movies I've never seen, but this one I don't know if I even knew about. Yeah, and I don't know, it's just, I mean, Ava Green, I, I've I've been a fan of ever since I saw her in uh, Penny Dreadful. I liked her in Penny Dreadful. That's another one I've been wanting to check out. <laughs> it always seemed really interesting. Just yeah, Penny, uh, Penny Dreadful was a very interesting show. Um, uh, it ended after three seasons, Uh it's debatable if it got a proper ending or not. Um, I, I would say it kind of did. Uh, it, it could have gone on longer, but um, I, I would say its ending was acceptable. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. She was in both Sin City movies. She was, yes. Was she? Yeah, uh, she I know she. I know she was in a Dame to Kill. I know she was in that. You know she was in both. I'm trying to remember who she was. But yeah, Ava Green is just okay. an. Aw- she's an awesome actress. Like I've liked her in pretty much everything I've seen her in. Yeah, she was in Three Hundred. Dark well, Shadows, she, which is is Dark she, Shadows the Johnny Depp vampire movie? She, uh, she was in, movie. Yeah. yeah, she <laughs> was in uh, the Dark Shadows uh, Johnny Depp movie. She was in that. She Jesus, was the, the cast she, for this movie was fantastic. She was in. She was the villain <clears throat> in that movie. She was the villain. Okay. She yeah, was the, She was the witch that turned uh, Johnny Depp into the vampire. Okay. Here we got Johnny Depp, Michelle Pfeiffer, Elena Bonham Carter, Eva Green, Jackie Earl Haley, Chloe Grace Moretz, mm-hmm. Christopher Lee. Uh, Christopher Lee was in it? Yeah. Small role, apparently, but still. I, I don't remember him being in the movie, but okay. Um, I only ever saw the movie once, but uh, I, I, I mean, I... I kind of remember it uh michelle pfeiffer was uh the mother of the family like she was the matriarch of the family uh chloe grace moretz was uh the daughter um i don't remember who played the the the, the father of the family um some no-name guy um Hel- helena bonham carter she played uh like the, the family physician um let's see um uh, uh, Ava Green, like I said, was the witch that turned Johnny Depp into the vampire. Uh, but she also played um, 
uh, a character in the modern times, which was basically like the 1970s. Uh, okay. She played uh, like this corporate woman that uh, tried to take over the the fam the, the the family business and try to steal it from Johnny Depp's family's like family, and uh, and they were gonna try to fight her, and that's what makes her the villain of the movie. Um, uh, Christopher and- Lee was Silas Clowney, a King of the Fishermen, who spends a lot of time in the local pub, the Blue Whale. Yeah, I, I look. I've only world. ever seen the movie once. I barely remember it. And Alice Cooper is himself. Nice. <laughs> yes, I do remember that he was in the movie as well, because uh, there was a scene in the movie where um, one of the kids in the family is like a fan of Alice Cooper. And Johnny Depp tries to bond with the kids in the family, and he he gets Alice Cooper to come to the house to perform a concert to try to bond with the kids. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's actually it's actually kind of a nice scene because Alice Cooper shows up at the house and pretty much parties with the family. Nice. Yeah, I should grab that movie somewhat recently ish. Yeah, I'll I'll have to get to that. The only time I can think of. I'm sure there's been, yeah, maybe enough. Like, I feel like there's something I'm forgetting, but the only other major time I can think of Alice Cooper being in a movie was uh, Prince of Darkness, where he played a homeless guy who murdered a guy with a bicycle. He murdered a guy with a bicycle. Yes, he did. <laughs> okay, that makes me think of this little ditty, which is bicycle, bicycle. <laughs> I'm you sorry. want to ride my bike? <laughs> look, look, I I like the I like Queen. Queen is like one of my favorite bands. They do well. Yes, they do. Although bicycle is breaking, not breaking new ground. Queen was a good band. Yeah, but I, no. I feel like they're going places. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's just like. Bicycle is not one of my favorite songs by them. It's actually Don't Stop Me Now. I love that song. That is my favorite song by that band. Also, like, uh, Tie Your Mother Down was always a good song. Yeah, but no. Everyone's like, oh, no, my favorite Queen song is Bohemian Rhapsody. And I'm like, dude, come on. But everyone loves Bohemian Rhapsody. That's like the that's like the, the trump card for that. Did no. you listen to the Shatner version I posted in the Telegram like last week after we no, did the show? I, no, I didn't, but I need to. <laughs> you should. It's it's an experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, Stone, clearly, so you listen to it? Well, clearly Stone disagrees. It's an experience. No, I agree with an experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah, it's <laughs> It's no ballad of Bilbo Baggins, but it's, you know. Nothing ever compares to the ballad of Bilbo Baggins. Is Bilbo. <laughs> so Fuck. just so just checking in, so just pro checking in time. Um, are, so are we now moving into Saw territory? Yeah, I think, I think it's time for us to move into Saw. Yeah. We need to move into the circular variety of Saw. Well, I mean, luckily, at this point of efficiency, um, Saw was pretty pretty simple enough. Mm -hmm. But I guess I I guess the the little thing that if we do we want to do we want to try to just lock into it from just like watching the movie and just going from here, or do we want to try to place? You know where where in the timeline this movie actually happens. What do you mean? Hmm? Yeah, I, I see what you mean, but I don't think my my memory of the other movies is good enough okay. to do so. Okay. It's been a while. Like, if you can, go ahead. Fair enough. But it's been a while since I've seen any of these movies. So, look, look, I'm just going to clear the air right now. I did not watch the the first Saw movie 
last night or this morning because the movie is still very vivid in my head. I've seen the movie several dozen times over the years. I remember pretty much ev almost everything there is to remember about the movie, so I would be able to discuss it no problem if we were to just focus on discussing the movie itself. However, the sequels, I will have to watch those again because I barely remember them. Gotcha. So if we're yeah. going to do if we're going to do any connections to the sequels today, that I will have a problem with. So like this, no it, problem. No, no one's asking you to. No one's. There's no requirements here. It's if, if if at all possible. Like for me, for example, while limited, I do still have a working knowledge that I feel like that this movie was kind of more at the was kind of more more let so at the beginning beginning ish i would say because based on what i saw back based on what i witnessed in this most recent movie it just feels like Yes. How can I put this in a way that I'm I'm, tr I'm trying to do this in a way that ah, let me see. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna try to do my best to be as respectful as I can to the red to the spoilers and red flags. But okay, let me just see. Um all right. From the way I look at it, like there was some knowledge. So he had done some so so he had definitely done some things by the time, you know, so when we when we're dealing with what was going on with Saw X, he had already started to do some things, but yet still seemed hopeful in treatment, or at least, no, well, at least desperate at that time to get treatment and survive. So I feel like this is more beginning-ish. I feel like Saw is more like beginning-ish so it's still accurate in his way because I think this is more around the time that he first realized mm -hmm. that I think it's more around the time that he first realized that he first got his diagnosis that as we that as we may or may not know and forgive me was you know what I'm saying was was eventually a result of you know of making a mistake with the x-rays that really caused the you know that really caused the things to send it to a to a more downward spiral but um at any rate doesn't matter but at least it's at, at that point that he got his diagnosis or at least had had things that basically moved along to where you know it was becoming dire for him at that point so i still think those stages even with this particular even with the first saw movie was still more beginning ish I was trying to think, when was the movie where they had the flashbacks? Was it four? When they had the flashbacks, like where he creates the puppet, the, you know, iconic jigsaw puppet. I mean, which he created the, initially a, a, a far less that, creepy version for his like unborn child, I think is where that came about. But I believe that happened over over a couple of movies though especially when yeah that, especially, when it came to, especially when it came to to the hoffman arc i believe that a couple of movies kind of dealt with some flashbacks and things yeah. like that that's what i mean like <laughs> with movies like this especially having not seen them in a while my timeline is fucking it, it's very fuzzy yeah but no it's, it's no problem that's that's what the fall is it's car face am i red right? charles <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> but um, I would just say that um, at this point, that's why I was saying I'm totally good. I'm just saying totally good. We're just kind of locking into the movie and and just kind of and just kind of re, just kind of resetting the path at this point. Resetting our you know say our, our you know say our locking in on the timeline. It's fine. Um, I just I would just say that that definitely at that point. Because again, I say beginning ish, it still ties because by the time they, by the time even in the first movie when we reach, when we get introduced to the Doctor Gordon, 
there was already, of course, he had all he had already begun. Jigsaw had already begun doing his thing, and now uh, he had already begun doing his thing. And I need to uh, when I need to stop doing something. Is put is put the references to Saw X to the side, and just kind of focus in on just Saw. But um, anyway. But by the time they get the, by the time we were introduced to him and everything like that, and he's in the bath, he's in that ridiculously uh, gross bathroom. Like it's one of my phobias, fucking public bathrooms, especially nasty ones. But anyway, um, <laughs> what is uh, <clears throat> I can't remember Lee One L's character, like the guy who's not Gordon. What was his name? Adam. No. Adam. Okay. Yeah. When he goes, I, I went from I went from was it I went from living in a shithole apartment to being in an actual shithole. So, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and so, let me see. It's like, so by the time they got them, they, they were already like frustrated. How don't, how don't Jigsaw's tail and feeling like at that point, because, because for some reason, I guess because he decided to throw them, to throw them off of his tail by sort of like implicating Dr. Gordon in this and everything like that. Again, a part of me can't help but to feel like that maybe that whole thing was just a part of the, you know, just part of the plan because he, he knew. And anyway, but again, focus. That, that's the thing. That's like that's the thing. And watching this movie, knowing even as fuzzy as my memory is, knowing future things, I, I, I wonder if any of anything in the future was planned, or if it was just like. You know, they just work things in because I, and maybe it is just knowing things from the future, but I felt like there were certain things in uh, Carrie L. Is Elways? Yeah. That's another name I've never been sure how to pronounce. Elways? Elways? Yeah. That's how I've heard it. That certain things in his performance that I'm just like, did they like lay a seed of certain things? So there's, there's times where I'm like, yeah, I don't know if it's just future knowledge or or what, but there seems to be certain things where I'm kind of like... But the foot cutting, but the one thing we can't deny, the foot cutting is real. And Yeah. When fucking... And it, it, it lets me know that the one thing that we got to that, that we gotta just know for sure, that we got to just kind of lay down as fact, is that anybody who's going to, even somebody who's going to be eventually working with Jigsaw, that they're going to be tested first. Mm. You know that that's it's it's, not, it's almost like non-negotiable. Amanda, you know? Gordon, so on. Except, except for except for oh, except for the one guy when he just realized it was just a fucking mistake. It wasn't anything sinister or arrogant or 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 blo- or disregarding that he did. It was just a mistake. You know, with the X-rays. Yeah, that was just. I don't know if you remember. Do I call it malpractice? Maybe. Technically, yeah, but but it was still a mistake. (laughs) Just a a simple, honest to goodness accident. You know, yes, it caused. You don't say it caused things that could have. It caused situations that could have been controlled earlier. To, you don't say to get out of control, but. You know, it wasn't it, it wasn't with any sinister or disregarding intent. No, it's like Charles Wheaton getting a bunch of people killed. Just you know, <laughs> he didn't mean to. Okay, all right. <laughs> you you were asking the question if um, if you were able to pronounce his last name correctly, and. I just spent the whole time, this whole time, trying to figure out if you did pronounce it right. His last name is actually pronounced Carrie Elwes. So I was close to the second time. So it's like Elvis, but with a W. It's pr- it's pronounced Carrie Elwes. It is Carrie yeah. Elwes. Yeah, because I, I watched a video of real world pronunciations, like people actually pronouncing it correctly in real world situations. It is Carrie Elwes. Yeah, that's yeah. something I've been wondering since I was like probably six years old. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I'm in the same boat. I'm in the same fucking boat, dude. It's just, I'm like, is it Gary Elwes? Is it Gary Elwes? I mean, is it like what? Is it? It's just Gary Elwes. I'm like, is it Gary Elwes? Is it Gary Elwes? I mean, is it like what is it? Like, tell me, tell me how to pronounce your name, damn it! It's just like it's like I'm gonna pronounce it some way, but I would like to be correct. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing what he's saying. Gordon was always a part of Jigsaw's plan. Adam's game was rigged. May, no, I, I don't think the game was. I mean, look, I'm sorry. Cutting your foot off, cutting this, this, there's no, there's no shortcut way to cutting your foot off. There's no going, there's, there's going no to pull. Uh, what was that fucking that Franco movie? James Franco movie about the like the real life the guy who cut his foot off to get out. What was that fucking? Uh, something, something hours. 147. There you go. 127. 127. Hours. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, going full 127 hours on yourself. Like, that's, you know. All right. Uh, that's guys, commitment right there. Talk amongst yourselves. I will be right back. Got to go take care of something. Too easy. Jerking a gurgit. <laughs> Rude. All right, but um, <laughs> I would just say. That um, that no, I just I, again when I when I think about to me, if he came out, on, it was a little more okay, cuts cuts and bruise, but otherwise fine. Like Hoffman, like 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 Hoffman played it. See the way Hoffman played it was rigged. He rigged it. The way Hoffman played it, he rigged it. But like cutting off your foot, having to cut off your own foot. To escape that, to escape that room, that's not that's not rigging. <laughs> that's I, I just can't I can't agree to that being rigging. Just can't. <laughs> A part of me that's is like, Go ahead. That, I was just gonna say that's commitment. I don't think I think I'd. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I actually don't know what I would do. Like, I don't know if I could cut through my foot or through my ankle. Even if it, even if the the downside was dying in a fucking shit stained fucking you know bathroom, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would have that fucking yeah that that I I don't know if I have that to be able to cut through my own fucking with a hacksaw, be able to just cut my own foot off to get out. I don't know if I have that in me. But I guess you don't know until you're there, really. You feel it. I mean, it's. I think they did well to depict the situation of, of having, like, of not knowing, of not knowing what was going on with his wife, with his daughter, and everything like that. The, the, the extreme situation with that, and just feeling like he had to, he had to do it. You know, I mean, it's just like there was no other way. He had to fucking do it, you know. But um, I could definitely understand how someone can say that it was sort of rigged because. But I mean, they both had the same. They both had the same setups. They, he was he was able to be electrocuted just the way that Adam was able to be electrocuted by that you know by that chain by that chain hookup. Um, yeah, but Adam was kind of as we find out fucked from the start. But he didn't have, but it was both there. I mean, he didn't have a key either. <laughs> Neither one of them had a key. What if that was, what, what if that, what if that key, true, what if yeah, that one key, true. what if that one key maybe, or or maybe because, because it's so weird to, to look at it, to look at it when it's underwater and you see it glowing at one point, then it's not, it's like, damn, okay, am I seeing one key go down? Am I seeing two keys go down? Maybe that one key could have opened up both of their, could have opened up both of their locks. You know, maybe if it was only one. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just not, you know, I'm just not seeing, like I said, he definitely didn't have a key. You know, yeah, okay, I hear it. I, like I said, I, I I get it. And I acknowledge that key possibly could have opened up both of their, you know what I'm saying, both of their basically, their traps. But I still say. Wait, like, I'm trying. I was half asleep when I watched it. But how did the plug get pulled? So I don't know. Adam wakes up and he wakes up obviously in a bathtub full of water. But how did the plug get pulled? 
because his because that's ultimately the the thing that really fucks everything. Because his, because they had him the way they had him set up before he, I guess he because before he got laid back or whatever, it his foot was sort of like up on the tub where that you know say where the chain was. That was okay, so it's blood. pretty much like so it's like if once you wake up and you're kind of startled, it's it's gonna happen. Okay. You, yeah. you could it's debatable. Thank you, baby. You could plug this tight to his not, head. Okay. It's not deep water. You could you, you could sit up if, if if you don't panic, he panicked. Yeah, that, and, yeah, but like who's not gonna like in that sort of moment, who's not gonna like they you wake up submerged in water? Who, who's not gonna like at least have a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> spasm or something like you're probably gonna have like a you know brief moment be like ah what the fuck tied and, they sort of intensely had him tangled more than me and tied it was like because i would have to look because because i didn't see i seen like almost like his foot or like his toe kind of being like right there where the little chain where the chain was where so when he got up and started and started doing all that and he moved his foot it's almost like he just plop, plop the you know what i'm saying plop the plug right on out and it just and so went the key, and yeah. So it's like to that point, I yeah, I could see the rigged argument, really. But see, but but again, it's not like he somehow miraculously got his own key and was able to get himself out of his out of his setup. He ended if what ended up happening is that he had to cut off his foot. Period. Yeah. This, and and I don't and I don't see. And I can understand how somebody can see his rig. Like, okay, it could have been worse. He could he could have done that too. But he broke. But he broke his saw. In frustration, he ended up breaking his saw. But he could have had him. He could have asked him to toss. Which him actually, that's another thing that I kind of wonder if it lends to the rigged argument. Because <clears throat> while he broke his saw, like doing this, like Gordon was doing the same thing, and even kept going longer than Adam did, but his saw didn't break. But he was so. Did did Adam have like a you know was it like a like a pre uh, <clears throat> a so pre weakened saw? So are you saying that the saw broke while he was while he was trying to cut the chain, or, or did it break when he was or did it break when he was trying to when he when he threw it down in frustration? I think I'm fairly sure he threw it down in frustration after it broke. So you're saying it broke? So you're saying it broke while he was trying to cut the chain? I'm fairly sure it did. I, See, kids, I, this is why you don't watch movies half asleep that you have to discuss later. Because <laughs> I distinctly remember him being so But I'm fairly sure. Because when he realized it's not, and he's so frustrated when he threw it down, I saw I, I saw the thing breaking apart when he when he threw it down in frustration. See, V said it, it broke when he tried to, like, that's what I'm, I'm fairly sure. He was trying to cut the chain. And it broke, and then he started like, yes, yeah, smashing it down in frustration. I'm <laughs> fairly like I'm almost certain. See, and, and sometimes, and on the other side of that, sometimes it's not always just watching the half sleep. Sometimes you can even you can even be looking for more substantial things when you're analyzing a movie that you've seen a bunch of times, and miss and then miss out on the small little details. Like this, like I thought, I didn't, I really didn't think it broke then, but okay. And his didn't, hmm. his didn't break like that though. That's that's why it makes me feel like it didn't. That's why it didn't register to me because because Doctor Gordon's saw didn't break like that when he was cutting his chain. No, like he he saw what happened, and still kept trying at least for a you know a little bit. Let me see. Hmm. There are separate cuts of the yeah, movie. Yeah, this I didn't know. Are different if you all watch a different version. Maybe, maybe if I watch it more the if I watch the theatrical version, possibly. I, I, I get that. I honestly get that didn't know there was two versions. This no, has we, happened a few times on this show, like Halloween uh, six. <laughs> you got, I think, you and Charles watched just the regular version. I watched the uh, director's cut or whatever the fuck, which was pretty much an entirely different movie to a point. But this one, I actually didn't know there was different cuts of Saw. Theatrical directors and 
There's three different versions. Okay. Hmm. I have no idea what I watched then. I'm pretty sure I watched the... I would okay. guess unrated, not director's cut, because it seemed to be pretty much exactly the same as I remember you know, 20 years ago or whatever the fuck, whenever this came out. That enforced it nearly 20 years ago, but... No. All right, I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, really? Okay, hold on a second. He says now, this is interesting. He says, from before, Saw 3 gives you a solution to beat the, the foot saw trap. But no spoilers from me. Really? Saw 3 gives you some sort of solution other than a key. Other than the key to beat the foot. Wait a minute. This son of a bitch still hasn't told us why we're bastards. God damn it, V. Wait, wait, we still don't have an answer as to why he called us bastards? No. Keep commenting all this other fucking because helpful maybe, shit. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. No more comments, V, until you give us an answer as to why we're bastards. I think it was, I think maybe you felt like you guys were shitting on Pulp Fiction. We weren't shitting on Pulp Fiction. No. I definitely wasn't. Even Charles wasn't. He shit on yeah. Scarface a little bit, but Pulp yeah, Fiction, he had nothing but good words. Yeah, Pulp Fiction was great. I love Pulp Fiction. Hell, I'd like to watch it again. Scarface, Me too, actually. Scar I, I want to watch both now. Yeah, Scarface, all pro Scarface, all pro oh, wait, because you were, you were talking about Inglorious Bastards. Why? <laughs> I was talking about Inglorious Bastards because I was, I was talking about Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. And he also said good things about that. Yeah, I love Inglorious Bastards. That was a great movie. Oh, I get it. God damn it. He's saying we're Nazis. Okay, it's fine. No, 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 no. He's calling us bastards because the name of the movie is Inglorious Bastards. Get it? Isn't it spelled with an E, though? Is it? Actually, you know what? I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, I think there was an older movie with the same title. Yeah, no, so you know I what? Didn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't fit. V. It doesn't fit because it's spelled differently. So, if you, take, if, but if you take a step back with that, you you really want to change the the e back to an a, because why? Because you see, because because honestly, not not because we're looking at a toilet, but you but with it with the a change to an e. You still will see turds. <laughs> so, so do we? we turds or turds? <laughs> I don't even know. Do you see what you've done, V? Do you see? Do you see? Moving on. <laughs> Oh, what happened? Let's tongue go. But there he is. Okay, all right. So, um, okay. So I'm just going to uh, say, um, um, all right. I'm can, I, can, can I? Um, all right. Can I? Can I post something in the chat here? <laughs> you can. Yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I should put this. I don't know if I should. Okay. <laughs> if it's truly terrible, we're not no, no, read no. It. It's it's really not. This is something that I got from another YouTube channel that I watch. Okay. So, um. Oh God damn it! I gotta connect my YouTube channel. And please remind me later to send you the Scarface TV edit. All right, hold on. Uh, I'm just. Gonna... It's like a couple minute clip of. No, no, they, no. They did. I, I, no, I can't. I, I can't. I can't post this. But um, never mind. I forget it. I, I have to connect my YouTube channel, and I don't want to fucking do that. Really? You had a, just to post a link in the private chat? No, not not in the private chat. I wanted to post this in the chat for everybody to see, but I can't. I can't. I have to connect my YouTube channel. Really. 
Yeah. Can I just I, like I, copy the uh, URL and post that? No, 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 it's it's not a video. It's something that I was going to type in the chat. Now I'm thinking it is terrible. All right, I'll just you, say it. Can I'll just I'll just say it. Repeat after me. I am. So bitch. I am. Sofa King. Sofa King. We taught it. We taught Ed. <laughs> You, you, you're going to give me an Aqua Teen Hunger Force joke? Like, I don't know, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking, like, African shaman <laughs> is funny. <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> Now, for those who missed it, I am Sofa King. We taught it. <laughs> Look, this this YouTube channel that I watch posts that joke all the fucking time when he makes fun of other people. And I never got it until I typed it out to try to understand what he's actually saying. And then I finally got it. And I'm like, oh, fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if Aqua Teen Hunger Force came up with that joke, but that's the first time I ever saw it. <laughs> it's this, like, African shaman guy trying to get them to, like, you know, do something to solve the problem. It's, you know. <laughs> 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 I was laughing about that for like 10 minutes after I finally got it. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh. And of course, Stone isn't around, so it's just me. Yeah. I'm so fucking retarded. So. <laughs> 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 All right, so what do we do now? We're going we gotta to pause the... <laughs> do I just keep repeating it until Stone comes back? I don't fucking know. Uh, because I might become so fucking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, TV. Uh, well, okay, <laughs> so how about while we wait for Stone to come back, how about we talk about what we might discuss after we're done with Record of Ragnarok? All right, so <clears throat> do we do the second season? I figure we might as well at this point. We suffered through the first half, which was so terrible, Stone. Yeah, I know he can hear us. For you. How about them apples? <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so, uh, well, I mean, uh trying to think of other things we could do for well scrolling yeah. scrolling 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 if we're, if scrolling if we're, if we're still on for the next weeks if we're still on the anime like on the anime train there is another anime that we could check out if you haven't already watched it it's so called, saying it, it's called Edge Runners. Oh shit! I I actually did. I've started that. I watched the first episode. That's only a six episode thing. Yeah. Cyberpunk like it, Edge Run, Cyberpunk Edge Runners is fucking awesome. Yeah, like it definitely it helps if you played the game, but it's not necessary either. No, it's not. 
And I'm like, actually if playing. You, if you I'm play playing... the game, it enhances it. Yeah, yeah. enhances it a little bit for yeah. sure. Yeah, but... it does. And I'm playing the game right now. Not 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 right this second, but I am playing the game currently. Yeah. I I can't wait to get back to that. Like I played that on like I bought it and played it on launch and. Luckily, I didn't really have too many of the issues that plagued other people. And I really fucking enjoy that game. Like, that... Mm -hmm. Both the world is both very well made, but also dense as well. Mm -hmm. It... One of those games where you really just get sucked right into it. But yeah, um... Edge Runners um, is a great anime. But I think it's, it's also, only six episodes, right? Or was it eight episodes? I think it's longer than that. I think it's eight. Whatever it is, like it, yeah, very easy. But, to get um, but but Edge Runners is also a very tragic anime. There's yeah, a lot, like a lot just of, based on the first of, episode, is yeah. There's a lot of sad moments in the episode. Like the first episode has that whole scene where David Martinez loses that person i won't yeah. spoil it but um yeah but uh yeah it's just like it, it's only downhill from there yeah it gets it gets a lot worse yeah i got that feeling there was uh i can't remember who was in that like as far as the english dub actors but i know uh giancarlo esposito gus fring from breaking bad was in it I feel like there was a couple other names, but I can't remember exactly. I don't remember who who uh, Giancarlo Esposito voices, but I know it's yeah. I can't remember movie. either. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'll, I'll look it up. Um, let's see. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. But no, they like yeah. Just based on one episode, they did a very good job of recreating mm -hmm. that world as an anime. I was quite yeah. happy with that. Okay, let's see. Okay, so Zach Al Alguilar uh, plays David Martinez. Let's see. Um, oh, okay, so Giancarlo Esposito plays Faraday. Okay. Oh, I don't uh, think that character has been introduced in the first episode. I don't think. Hmm. I don't think. I don't know, it's been it's been a while. Like I grabbed that ages ago. Just watched the first one, but I'll definitely rewatch that if we do decide to do it. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm just gonna let's see. Cyber. Yeah, I'm trying to think of all the things of Whedon's review corner. Like, you ever seen Goodfellas? No, I haven't. Okay, there's an option. Um, I should not think of other like fucking classic movies. That you get. I mean, there's <laughs> countless movies, but uh, let's see, Goodfellas. Goodfellas would definitely have to do at some point. Um, let's see what else we got? Um, let's see. Um, there was a there was another thing. Um. I know there's a bunch of other movies I haven't seen that I should see. Uh, what about Fargo? I know Fargo. Fargo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I rewatched that recently as well. That just, yeah. It's one of those pretty much, it, it's a fairly timeless movie, really. There's really not a lot in there that will date that movie. Yeah, Fargo is a movie that I should watch at least once. Um, For sure, yeah. Um, there's one movie that I haven't seen in years. I did see it once, but I haven't seen it in years. It's Throw Mama from the Train. Never seen it. Yeah, it had Danny DeVito, Billy Crystal. Um, <laughs> I, briefly, I was I was briefly confused. I was thinking of um, Stop or oh, My Mom Will Shoot. The fucking that horrendous Stallone movie. <laughs> yeah, but no, there's a there's a just scene. Ignore that I said that, and ignore that it even exists. Just, yeah. just don't even. 
Yeah, but there's a scene in Throw Mama from the Train where Danny DeVito brings Billy Crystal over to his house. And he and his mother walks into the into the kitchen and they're eating dinner or or something. They're having some kind of meal. And the mother says, who's this? And Danny DeVito says, oh, this is uh, this is my cousin, Patty. You know him. And the mother just looks at him and says, you don't have a cousin, Patty. And then Danny DeVito looks at Billy Crystal and just says, you lied to me. And grabs a frying pan and smacks him over the head with it. <laughs> and Billy Crystal just like jerks and just like falls over and just thuds on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> First time I ever saw that, I laughed my ass off. I almost pissed myself. <laughs> oh, whether we do that or not, I'm adding it to my list right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely love that movie. It's such a great movie. Only ever seen it once, but I need to see it again. Oh, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw Billy Crystal in something, actually. Yeah, it's been a long time. It has. Oh, another movie that we actually talked about recently. The Jerk. The Jerk, yeah. That's something I haven't seen in at least two decades. I would love to revisit that. Mm -hmm. I've never seen, seen The Jerk. Never seen it? Okay. Yep. Let's see. What else have we got? I, again, there's countless options that you potentially haven't seen. I'm trying to think of ones will be like, you know, good discussion points. Mm -hmm. it's probably something we should be doing off air, but Stone's not here. So, you know, you got to fill the time somehow. Well, yeah, of course. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Welcome back, Stone. Welcome back, Stone. Just talking about movies we should do for Whedon's Review Corner. So far, we've got uh, Goodfellas, The Jerk, Throw Mama from the Train, which Charles has seen, but not for a while. Any other ideas? Hmm. As, it's just, as I just said, there's countless, like, things that Charles potentially hasn't seen that are classic movies, but yeah, I will need some time on that one. I think I've yeah. already made some suggestions. Hopefully he's taking some notes of those. Oh, um, another movie we added to the list, Fargo. Oh yeah, Fargo, yeah. I would have thought you would have seen that by now. Nope, never seen it. Which I still... I, I mean, you probably haven't seen with Ian Gilbert Great Men. Oh man, that has, in my opinion, one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen. <laughs> when I can't remember what he says, but Leonardo DiCaprio says something to Johnny Depp while he's sitting in the tub, and Johnny Depp just fucking smacks him. I can't remember what it was, and it's probably not that funny, but I remember in high school we watched that for, a, I think it was an English class, and... <laughs> Yeah, they, that scene, I was just laughing my balls off. I mean, I don't know, man. That... Why am I in the tub, Gilbert? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Australians. <laughs> oh, Australians. Really? You're going you gonna to be like that? Nah. A little bit, no, because that one. I, I mean, you're correct, but still, <laughs> I'm right here. I'm looking at you. <laughs> just send it to Charles behind my back, like this fucking guy, right? Well, you know, I say, you know, I say it with love, but um, <laughs> I know <laughs> I truly do, but um, I just, you know, that one was that one was definitely. I don't know. It's one of them things. It's, it's one of those movies for me. It's just one of those movies that I hold up there. You know, just real, just, just real. I don't know. It, it, it was it was a real. I don't know. Just quite a movie. Quite a cast. Quite a movie. Just quite. Hey, it, it was a great movie for sure. Like some great performances in that movie. 
I try not to laugh at stuff that was going on in that movie that would have made me laugh in, in other movies. I try not to because I just try, I'm trying to treat it as a as a different thing, you know? This is that's kind of what I found myself doing. I mean, Charles, do you mind spoilers for a movie that you're probably never gonna watch? What movie would it be? What's eating Gilbert Grape? I've heard of it, but what's it about? Uh, it's about uh, you got Johnny Depp who's taking care of his uh, was it Down syndrome? Is that what DiCaprio had? I don't know if they ever specified. Yeah, you know. I, I, I want to say Down syndrome, but I'm not sure. Like, it was like that, around that time they were probably being less being less sensitive about about things and, and it's all and it was all just kind of you know <laughs> it's all kind of it's all the same thing to you, you know it's, it's all the same thing to them the r word you know so yeah but it was definitely that kind of like that kind of like he dude can't do like he needs someone to care for him he can't do things for himself like he can't just live He doesn't have, I mean, he definitely, he's functional, but he just constantly, no, absolutely no impulse control, absolutely yeah, no, no sense of responsibility or, or his own danger and things like that. So it's just, yeah. yeah. Pretty much no grasp of anything, really. No, he's got... He's got grasp of things, but it's just his affect is his affect is off. Like he understands death. He understands about his dad being dead. And but his affect yeah. is just the way he the way he chose to deal with the upset of it. You know what I mean? It's just it is it, it was really just, you know. It was really just kind of I don't know, kind of like wires, kind of like wires crossed in in and how and any emotion to have about that about that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. he seemed to understand death. It just seemed to un, it seemed to upset him and make him react in a different way than it might make some other people react. But he might be a little bit somber about it, a little bit sad or something like that. But he was kind of just um, I don't know. He seemed to be elevated about it. You know what I'm saying? He seemed to be. His emotion, his you know, what I'm saying his anxiety seemed to elevate about it. I guess I don't, you know, just a little bit about the best way to put it. But you know, and he had to deal. And of course, with, with the thing that we don't mention, of course, that he had is that Gilbert had to take care of it. it had to be more of the caretaker for his brother because his mother was was the pioneer, was the pioneer of the like six my six hundred pound life. Yeah, know, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's what I was sort of getting to. But when she got pissed off, I mean, we, you know, just in case you, just in case you see it again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resist going back too far down memory lane on that. But and just a, uh, and just a quick check in. How are we doing on the rest of Saw? Or are we, or we felt pretty good about where we've ended. Oh, uh, we put a pause on it while you were dealing with whatever. Okay, so there's more we want to say on that in the next few minutes before, so we don't make this a five-hour show. <laughs> it's been late for that. <laughs> uh, no. Oh no, we still we still got time to not make it a five-hour show. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, sorry, just uh, trying to. Swallow. Are you eating pizza again? Yes, I have leftover pizza. God oh, damn it. Well, then we definitely I thought it, we, I thought you were going to get McGriddles. I wasn't able to leave. Yeah, true. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Well, then we definitely I have to, I have to leave to go to McDonald's, and I wasn't able to leave because we actually ended up doing the show. So in, that, in reality, it's the show's fault that I wasn't able to get McGriddles. Mm. <laughs> That's true. Right. Stone, do you see what you've done to poor Charles? He couldn't get McGriddles. Because of you and your tech issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He doesn't feel bad at all. <laughs> no, my this tech poor guy is going without no, McGriddles. <laughs> no, my tech, no, my tech issues should allow him to go in to allow him to go to McDonald's. Actually, that's yeah, it's true. But we we would talk about stuff. <laughs> so I guess it's my fault ultimately. 
<laughs> nah, nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's it's too late for McGriddles anyway because they stopped serving breakfast at ten thirty. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So yeah, it's too late. It's not part of the. Do you guys have the all day breakfast menu there? I'm sorry. What? You don't like the all day breakfast menu. You don't have that. Nope, they got rid of that. Ah, so we've got one thing up over on you over here. We don't have McGriddles, but I can get a bacon egg McMuffin at any time I choose. Yay! Yay, I'm Australia! Not, I'm, you fucking yay. asshole! <laughs> but I'm not a McDonald's guy, but um, you know, I've never, never, not really been that much of a McDonald's guy, so yeah, that doesn't it never really excited me. But so, what do we have left on saw? Well, um, let's talk about. Well, the fact that one of my favorite actors is in this movie. I'm not talking about Tobin Bell. I'm talking about the great Michael Emerson. Uh, 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 damn it. Um, ah, fuck. Uh, from Lost. Fucking. God damn it. It was the first name I thought of when I saw him when I was watching this movie. Benjamin. Lioness? That's not... I mean, I remember him from Lost, but I also remember him from the TV show Person of Interest, where he played Howard Finch. Ah, that. I, show, I watched the first episode of that, enjoyed it, never watched any more. I think yeah. it got cancelled, and I was like, eh, wow. No, no, it, it got it got a proper ending. Uh, oh, it, it did? Yeah, wow. it, got, it got five seasons. It got five well, seasons. in that case... I'll have five, to go back to that. Yeah, it got five seasons and it got a proper ending. Then he was he was in another show somewhat recently that looked interesting. It was Evil. Evil, yes. Yeah, that looked evil. quite interesting. Didn't like it. No? And I also did not like his character because his character is a super dick. Because <laughs> that was like a... What was that show? I was actually kind of confused. Now that I, th I thought I had a clear image, but I was actually um, I was thinking show, about it kind of confused when I saw the trailer for it. Uh, the show the is about um, a uh, I think it's a psychologist, a priest, and an atheist slash skeptic. That and they all go into a bar. Yeah, well, yeah they, all, they all go into a bar, but no, they all investigate. Uh, they all work for the Catholic Church, and they investigate cases of suspected possession. Okay. Yeah. And it, was, it had like a somewhat comedic bent to it, if I remember. There, right. there is, there is bits of comedy in it as well. There is. There's little bits of comedy in it as well. And Michael Emerson's character is basically a bad guy. And uh, he's he's like he is like he's a, he is a dick. Like he is not he is not nice at all in the show. He really isn't. Like like his character's introduction in the show, he is trying to undermine uh, a trial and get this kid sent into prison. And when he is talking to the lead to the to the lead of the show, who's played by this woman, uh, she's trying oh, he's, to. He's not the lead. He's not. No, he's not. He's a yeah. supporting character. Um, he's like this woman is trying to the, the lead. The lead woman is explain trying to talk to him, trying to say like, I mean, like she's she's saying like, I mean, don't like. Um, like this, this, like prison life is going to ruin this kid's life and everything. And he just all casually talks about was like, he's going to get an education as soon as, any, as, as soon as he experiences his first rape. Like he's, he all casually like, like says that. And I'm like, holy shit. He did not just say that. Wow. <laughs> so they just, yeah, just straight out of the gate. Like, this is not a guy you're probably going to root for very much. Yeah, yeah. He's a straight up asshole. Like, wow. Now, as I progressed through the show and I watched it, I was like, yeah, this show's not for me. It's just, I, I didn't like it. 
I, I just, I, I, I don't like the show. I watched all of season one. I watched all of season two and I was like, mm, no, this, this is if just I, not, this is just not for me. I, I don't like it. If I recall right, I believe it got canceled after, I think it was three, then picked up by a streaming network. No, no, because... it got it got canceled after season one, and then it oh, got that it, it, it got canceled after season one because it was on CBS. It was a CBS show, uh, and then it got picked up by Paramount Plus. Well, at, originally it was CBS All Access. It got picked up on there for season two, and then when the CBS All Access became Paramount Plus. They they continue the show on there and now uh, it's it's it currently has three seasons on Paramount Plus. Okay, because yeah, that's definitely like when I first even knew it existed when it got picked up there. And yeah, so there I, are I actually didn't know the CBS All Access became Paramount Plus. Yeah, it was I, originally I called CBS. CBS was, just like completely folded after like six months. Yeah, it was originally called CBS All Access, and then it few. It fused with Paramount streaming service and became Paramount Plus. Huh. There you go. Yeah. All right, and and so right. yeah, it's just, but my whole reason of bringing up Michael Emerson is just because Michael Emerson is one of my favorite actors, mostly because of his performance in. Uh, Lost, I thought he was a great villain in that show, and then I also loved him as Harold Finch in Person of Interest. Personally, I think that's my favorite show that he was in. I, Person of Interest was an awesome show, and I definitely recommend that you guys check it out. I actually recommend adding Person of Interest to the watch list because I, I, I have yeah, watched... Five I have, seasons. I have watched the first four seasons of Person of Interest, but I have never actually watched season five. I've never finished the show, so I would like to finally finish the show. Was and that I, a was that a J.J. Abrams show as well? I believe it was. Yes. Yeah, I think that's why yeah. I checked it out initially. Yeah, but no, Person of Person of Interest was an awesome show. It was. It was great. Definitely recommend it. It was just uh, Jim Caviezel was great in it. And then when they brought in the other characters, uh, Sarah Sahai was awesome. Amy Acker was great in the show. Just like everybody was great. And then, of course, the other characters like, uh, I mean, Taraj B, uh, Taraji B. Henson, even though I'm not the biggest fan of her as a person, I thought she did a great job with her character. Can't say I know that name. I'm familiar with her as an actress, and personally, I think she's. Mm, I'm not really a fan of her as a person. I'm not. I, I think she's. Uh, let's just say I'm. I think she's obnoxious as a person. I, I don't. I don't really care for her all that much. But um, no, it's just. I can't remember the actor who played Detective Fusco, but he was probably one of the best parts of the entire show. Detective Fusco is probably my favorite character on that show. Like he had some of the best character development. Moved Started Fusco. Start, yeah, that's that was his character's name, but I can't remember the actor's name. Hmm. But he had some of the best character development in the entire show. Yes, I know. I started talking about Michael Emerson, who was in Saw, and then I started talking about some of his other shows, and it's just like, uh, uh, I know. I'm, it's I'm fine. going it's what we crazy. do, but it's fine. It's what we do, but I personally, <clears throat> I never thought I'd be a wet blanket on an actual show, but I kind of got to be because you know I'm under the gun now. They have to begin, and you know we, we promised. That we were, Wait, that we were you going to do a show with up. Kai? You going to mm -hmm. do that to us? You going to do a show with Kai Brancaccio? Is that oh, where you going right now? I would love to. <laughs> I, I, I would love to make that kind of dumbass joke. But it's just, I, I would. I would oh love, man! I would love to make that kind of joke. That, that, that's what's going on now. But it's really not. <laughs> I would. Lo I would love to make that kind of joke. But no, seriously, no. Of course, nothing like that. Mm. Those guys wouldn't have me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm um, no way. You know what I'm saying? Who could? 
<laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah, just you know, but like I say, it just it just shows how we it just shows how we can carry a show just on two just on two set pieces of material. You know what I'm saying? And we can still carry a show out like this. I mean, that that's quite remarkable. I say. <laughs> That's what we do. Quickly, before you go, good to know. I'm looking forward to it. The new saw is really great until the third act. Thank you, Citizen M. And gay is right. <laughs> Sorry, Stone. We're going to adjust the audience. No, we're good. We're absolutely good. We're fine. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just. I want to. I want to be here and see the whole situation through. Um, but like I said, I definitely want to. I'm just not sure. You know, again, because again, saw for me. Again, the first saw was pretty simplified, in my yeah. opinion. It was pretty simplified. Very different from what came afterwards. Definitely. Like, when I was looking into it, apparently this is like people were just like, "Oh, it's torture porn." I'm like, "You have no idea what's coming." If you think that, like, this to me was probably closer to, it was probably more a thriller than a horror movie in a lot of ways, really. Oh, yeah, there w this was not a horror movie at all. No, it was more like, uh, like, like Seven or something, really. Which, you know what, add that to the watch list, because I have never seen Seven. Oh, shit, well, add that to the list. Yeah. I'm familiar with the end of the movie. I know what happens, but... Um, I mean, I that's one of those endings, I think. What's in the box? I think everyone knows. Yeah. It, it's become as horrific as it was when you actually see the movie. It's become a parody at this point. Yeah, it's like, what's in the fucking box? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, that's what's in the box? Okay, I... <laughs> If that's who it is, I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's like 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 oh, what's in the box? It's like oh, it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Okay. Ah, Peppa Potts in the box. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Stone. Continue. No, it's nothing to continue on. I mean, it's honestly, it's not. It, this is absolutely fine. Like I said, you trust me. Like I said, any combination of us. Can do this. Can, can do this show. I'm I'm just about honesty. I enjoy doing the show, but like I said, but but we're all but we're all honest, and I'm always in consideration of you guys, and 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 making sure and making sure that we that we give the proper time, you know, to the show, and definitely. So, so I definitely I never want to leave it lacking, and I want to make sure that if there is something else to say or discuss on you know on the set topics, I definitely want to be there for that, and you know, so I'm definitely committed to that. And then, but then outside of that, we're just we're just having fun and riffing a little bit. I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind stepping back. I don't, I don't. The show doesn't have to end because I leave. You know what I'm saying? And and it doesn't, it doesn't have to keep going because you know what I'm saying? because I'm because I want to cut out early. It's all up. It's oh like, shit! Stone. Repeat after me. I am. I am. So far. In so far we Todd Ed <laughs> oh you're not gonna do it god damn it okay okay I am so I weird. am I am so far king so far king we Todd Ed we taught Ed. <laughs> now you're all caught up. <laughs> there <Thank> you <laughs> go. <laughs> you could thank the fool Charles Whedon for that. <laughs> Why did that just happen? <laughs> I should I should have just hit end. <laughs> Why did that just happen? <laughs> oh my god, okay. I'm a good sport. That's what, that's what it is. Oh I'm gosh. always gonna wonder, like, okay, no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> Can we do what? No, not here. We no, don't no, do that not, stuff not, here. Not during this show. We don't Citizen do that. Stuff. And plus, God, that would, that would have been a question to ask 
well before four hours, you know, saying in, you know, what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I what, uh, go back and watch the uh, uh, the last night creeps, yes, I definitely think you'll be very that. happy, definitely do that, definitely do that. for sure, definitely do that, but um. I don't know. Like I said, I just, I, I just, it, it needed this a little bit because, because the first saw was was pretty simplified. Again, like I said, it was pretty simplified and it pretty, it was pretty focused. It was pretty specifically focused at that point. So, you know, yeah, we, yeah, we dealt with some of the main characters that you know, at least one that still, that still seems to, to show themselves also, but mm. at points in the future. But um, but it's just like. Like I said, it just it just kind of really because it because it was like that one scene for the most part. It was either the bathroom or it was either or it was either Dr. Gordon's home and whatnot. And then at certain and then at certain small points, you know what I'm saying? One of you know what I'm saying, one of Doctor, you know something Doctor, but one of Jigsaw's enclosures and whatnot. But um so I think like I said, it was very short, it was a very small, compact kind of movie. You know, and basically, like I said, very focused. And I think it was just right at, I think it was sort of, like I said, more at the beginning-ish point of things. And I think, it, but it's like, it was still just like the beginning of everything that I thought everything was going to expand at that point. So, because I definitely, go ahead. Sorry. I was saying, like, is it just me? It was the creepiest moment in the first Saw movie. When Danny Glove is watching Gordon's apartment, and like he he's kind of whispering, which we find out later is because he's recently had his throat slit. But she's like, "Oh, there's there's someone else in your place. You are waiting for the doctor? I'm waiting for the doctor too." It's just it's just really fucking creepy. <laughs> okay, so that is in Saw One. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but um. You know, yeah, that's that's one thing about Danny Glover. He he does um, he does obsession and 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 dark emotion pretty well. I mean, he certainly like does. That. I mean, if Switchback is is any indication, I mean, I would definitely if you haven't, I would definitely recommend seeing him in Switchback for sure. I don't think I've ever seen it. One of the first one of the first movies I've seen with Jared Leto in it. The first Jared Leto movie, actually, no, I was gonna say Lonely Hearts, but it was American Psycho, like Paul Allen. Ah, uh, damn it, that's another movie we need to add to the watch list. I've seen a bit. Oh, oh, all right, we got, we got some ideas, and we do. Yeah, American Psycho is another movie I've never seen. Even though there are scenes of that movie that I have seen, like the scene where he he does uh, hip to B square, and uh, I I have seen that. Um, where it's like, hey Paul, yeah. <laughs> I'm sh- sure you've seen the gif of him pointing at himself in the mirror. Uh, I might kind have. Of winking. It's, uh, um, you may not necessarily know it's a mirror, but he's pointing at himself and he's kind of winking. Just Christian Bale, super ripped and shirtless, pointing at himself and winking. Nope, it uh, doesn't sound familiar. No. But no. I also uh, saw the part where he's being chased by the police and he's hiding behind his desk and he's on the phone and he says, "I've killed a lot of people." Yeah, <laughs> I, I know, I know that. Was, I know that part too. I killed a f, f word and his, his little dog. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah, just like there are so many fucking movies, so many classic movies that I've never seen. Oh, Whedon's Review Corner. It's going to be a lasting segment, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, I long mean, as, uh, as long as you're I, just, I, I don't you know, think it's, I don't think it's going to be, point. I don't think it's going to be Whedon's Review Corner. I think it's going to be Whedon's Review Hour. I mean, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we yeah. seem to be, we, Managed to turn it into a a review corner slash <laughs> more discussion. Yeah, exactly. Because there are so many movies that I have never seen. 
<sighs> Easy to do. There's so fucking much out there. Yeah, exactly. So many movies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Danny Glover's darkest performance is gone fishing. If, if, if I'm remembering right, that's the movie with him and Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Danny Glover gone fishing. I I'm fairly sure it's him and Joe Pesci. <laughs> this is a comedy movie. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that's the movie that he did with Joe. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Released in 1997. Yep. <laughs> Budget was 53 million. Box office was 19.7 million. It was a bomb. <laughs> That's <laughs> unfortunately one of my earliest memories of both those actors. Outside of, you know, Lethal Weapon and Home Alone, but <laughs> it's yeah. pretty much second to those. I remember seeing that on TV. <laughs> I think I liked it at the time. I, I can't remember, but <laughs> I can't imagine it even <laughs> remotely holds up. Wow. Uh, I'm trying to see who <laughs> else was in this movie. Stone, do you remember Gone Fishing? Danny Glover and Joe Pesci? Not too much. Vaguely. Uh, I was going to say, if you said not at all, you're pretty much with the majority of anyone who's ever existed. <laughs> but like I said, I have heard of it, but just vague. I don't think I did too much into that. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not necessarily going to put that next to Fargo as something that requires watching. I would definitely agree with that. All right. What's happening to you guys? <laughs> I'm dead air. Dead air. Doing out. Dead air. <laughs> I yeah, think there. it's not, I think it's I think it's a sure sign to close at least for right now. Unless you guys got some more to say, I got nothing else to say. It's well, it's five oh eight a.m. But because of daylight savings, it's six oh eight a.m. I lost an hour, so I hope everyone appreciates what I do for the show, which is not much. We definitely do, and that's why we don't want to. That's why we don't want to hold you up any longer than than what was absolutely necessary. Then. Yeah. So if you so if you guys are good, I will definitely call it a great show. Yep, yep. So we did four and a half hours, even though we were technically late. So yeah. Yeah, we and if we're gonna do that, we definitely can't be late because the earlier the better, for sure. Especially yeah, we were me. late, and whose fault was that, huh? Take oh, issues. I get a stone. <laughs> Take issues. Okay. But you know what? Start the show. Just start the show. I, I I would expect no less. If you guys want to start the show, start the show. It's great. It's great materials. You guys could be talking on the show, and I can come right in on there. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. I would I would never want to hold the show to you know what I'm saying to that extent. But you know what I'm saying. But if I but if I can, I can. You know what I'm saying. But when when I can get yeah. there, I will definitely get there as quickly as possible. Yeah, you know, yeah, so, course, but, but it's, it's got to it's got to move forward. That's why when I give you guys a message to give you a heads up, you know what I'm saying? It's like, look, you know, definitely got, if you got to pull the trigger, pull the trigger so we can get going. Mm. You know, what I'm saying? so that we're not so, so that we're not moving so far into the day like this. But no problem, we are good. Hey, hey Charles, pretty much, we do similar to what even if it was the three of us here, we we do somewhat of a show behind the scenes anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'll, I'll keep that in mind next time. Yeah, just, you know, yeah, just like I said, because we definitely do a, a lot on the show itself without having to put extra time in. But like I said, but, we, but it's all it's all about social 
being friends and enjoying the time and enjoying the show. So I understand it. It's not a problem. But I, you know what I'm saying? But it's, again, that's why we, we, you guys as friends, I don't mind being honest that look, I'm kind of under the gun. Got to get ready to get on my way. But you guys can definitely still do it if you want to extend it out. It's no problem. I never mind that. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's about us. We're a team. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not about me. I'm, I'm ready to done. It should be done. No, I can go. You guys can stay. It is never a worry. You know what I'm saying? So always know that anyway. That's it. This isn't the uh, previous version of the show where if it has to end, it has to end. Yeah, but when it's time, it's time. And we and we should all and then we should all be in agreement when it's time, it's time. But but other than that, if, if I got, you know, say if you guys don't feel like it's time and I gotta go, hey, all good. Again, all good. So where so where are we now? We're good to go. Yeah, we're good to go. Yeah. Um, I'll close this out if you want. Please. Okay. Well, everyone, thanks for checking us out on Tehe TV this week. Uh, we'll see you next week where I think we're going to be discussing season two of Record of Ragnarok, which, oh, you know, I'm going to be super excited to be discussing that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I can see it. Just look at him. He's, he's thrilled. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know what but we're also going to be discussing saw two and i believe that's everything we might also be discussing a few other things maybe as always uh, the uh full uh full series review of the continental oh yes the full series review of, of the continental because we were unable to discuss episode two this week okay, but uh yeah 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 but uh as always everyone thanks for stopping by and we will see you next week Bye bye everyone I want to say manana, but whatever next week is. <laughs>